Hi again, everybody. Welcome inside the press box. We are at DeSanto Field. My name is Ron Yance. To my right, Steve Bocci, the former right tackle of the 10 and 0 Spartans of 2018, yes. correct? Yep. Yeah, Steve knows how to win. And he's here tonight, hopefully, to help me call a win Have for Case Western Reserve University as they host the presidents of Washington and Jefferson. And Steve, when I mentioned Washington and Jefferson to you on the field as we stood pregame talking to Coach Debelak, your first response was It's a big game. We've got to get up, get ready, because WJ is going to bring it out. It's a different week for the Spartans this week. They're an aggressive football team. Yes. Traditionally. Correct. And as an offensive lineman, you saw that first and foremost. Yes, they always had a very strong, formidable defensive line, and they always play tough. And they are always have been the measuring stick in the PAC since it's been formed. And ever since the Spartans have came back, we've always tried to uh, come back and measure ourselves against them. Getting a real nice look of the Case Western Reserve University marching band on the field here before today's kickoff. They are forming the state of Ohio right now. Big night for football in the state of Ohio. None bigger than right off Euclid Avenue on the campus of Case Western Reserve University. So the Spartans come into this game, one win and one loss. Their opening loss was a game that we did two weeks ago as the number 10 ranked team in the country came to DeSanto Field. That was Johns Hopkins, and they really had their way with the Spartans of Case Western Reserve. It was 54-14 the final in favor of Johns Hopkins. They looked every bit a top 10 team. Coach Debelak said before the game it will probably be the toughest team that he has faced except for a Mount Union team in 2017 or 14, I forget the exact year, in his entire career. Now that's yeah. saying a lot. Yeah, that 2018 or that 2017 Mount Union team was pretty good too. Yeah. So. But the Spartans went to Pennsylvania, went to Waynesburg, mm -hmm. and they got a big victory there. It was 45-31. The one thing that I think Steve, Case Western Reserve has proven that they can do is put points on the board. The one thing that I think ha they have yet to prove that they can do is keep the opponent's scores at a smaller total. Yes, I mean, you have Drew Saxon leading your offense. Obviously, program leader in many, many statistical categories and also a leader on the field for those guys. And if he can control that offense and he can get in rhythm and his offensive line protects him, he's got the receivers around him to score. Now, on the flip side of that, his defense, as you said, a little weak. They're a young group, but they're going to come along. I have faith in these coaches to get those guys where they need to be. They're still kind of reeling from the side effects of missing a year off, and they're all kind of getting their uh, feet wet a little bit here. But hopefully, as long as they can fly around and hit people, they'll win. That Spartan defense will definitely be tested tonight. Washington and Jefferson comes in, two wins in two games. They beat John Carroll in the season opener in a shootout. 35-26, and then they knocked off St. Vincent at St. Vincent a week ago, 52-21. to So in two games, this offense that averages 482 yards per game has scored 87 points. Yes. Sounds like same old, same old W&J. Very prolific offense. Colton Jones is their quarterback. He's a junior. He's also a second-year starter. And their head coach is Mike Sirianni, and he is in his 20th year at Washington and Jefferson, he has an over 800 winning percentage. All the young man does is win football games. And you might know the name, his older brother, or I think it's his younger brother, actually, Nick, is the head football coach of the NFL's Philadelphia Eagles. As I like to say, when you're the head coach of an NFL team, you're the head coach at least for this week. Yes, yes. <laughs> but tonight, it's all about Division Three college football, and it's all about Washington and Jefferson here in Cleveland to take on the Spartans of Case Western Reserve University. Steve, this year, Coach Debelak has really employed a four-quarterback system. He has four young men that two play a lot, but all four will see the field at some point tonight, whether it's as a quarterback or a somebody in a slot or a wing position. The two most notables are, of course, your old friend, a guy you used to block for, Drew Saxton, the fifth-year senior who's just, you know, breaking record books. And the other one is a young sophomore, Ian Kipp, out of Mentor. Have you had a chance to see Kipp play yet? I've seen him play a couple plays here and there watching the live stream. I think I saw him a little bit against Waynesburg. But he seems very promising. He seems like a very dynamic athlete. Coach Debs obviously talks very highly of him, or else he wouldn't be playing, splitting time with, you know, Drew, who's a statistical leader. Well, that's exactly what he said when I asked him, why why, are, why do you feel the need to play all those quarterbacks? Mm -hmm. Because cause they deserve to be on the field. Yes. I mean, there's the old or the old adage of uh, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. 
But if there's any coach that can handle putting two quarterbacks out there and making sure the offense still flows with rhythm, it's Coach Debs. Well, we're going to hear from Coach Debs. We're going to take a timeout here on this pregame show before tonight's kickoff with Washington and Jefferson. Coach Debelak is coming up next with Sports Information Director John Schwartz after this break. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. And good evening and welcome inside DeSanto Field as the Spartans get set to take on Washington and Jefferson, ranked 25th in the country. I'm John Schwartz and joining me is head coach Greg Devilak. Uh Coach, before we get into this week's game, let's talk a little bit about last week and a real good bounce back win for the team, especially the offense and a 45-31 win over Waynesburg. Talk a little bit about your takeaways from that game. Yeah, I think offensively we played one, – one thing that stood out is we played with great pace. We had a lot of, uh, of our pace plays, our hurry-up offense um, that took Waynesburg out of some of their defensive game plan. You could tell because they were trying to do a lot of disguise defenses, and we went so fast they couldn't disguise. So, yeah, I thought everybody – executed really well uh Riley Nurik had eight catches in the first half it was great to see Riley have that kind of production um you know Drew played great got things going the other two quarterbacks had their moments too you know Ian Kipp again with a touchdown pass and was our second leading rusher line performed well so good all-around performance and defensively I thought we played great uh up to the last drive of the first half I, we played exceptional uh so we just got to find a way to sustain that and play more consistently and play four quarters of, of defense. I think we have the personnel, um, and I think we're ready to break through. You know, you talk about defensive personnel, and really a standout game for Caden Tong at defensive end for you. Five and a half tackles for loss through the first two weeks of the season. I believe that's the fifth most in Division Three so far. Talk about his performance on the defensive line in that game and, and what made him so effective. Well, what makes him as effective, he's, he is a freakish athlete. He is very quick, very athletic for a defensive lineman. Um, and he's just relentless. He just doesn't stop. You know, he did not play well the first week, and it was great to see him bounce back. He was our player of the game, and that's what he's capable of doing on a week-to-week -week basis. Balancing offense, typically you talk about balancing the rushing game, the passing game. You've got a couple extra pieces that you need to balance as a head coach now coming in because you have so much talent at the quarterback position, because you have a couple of rushers who can handle the football. When you come into a game and, and coming into this week against Washington Jefferson, talk about balancing all those different pieces and, and kind of putting it together into a harmonious package. Well, I think you do what you need to do on a weekly basis to win the football game. And we, we were coming in against a team in Waynesburg that played a – uh, triple option team the first week so we knew they we what we saw in video we were not necessarily going to get so we just played a very generic game plan and adjusted uh, against Washington Jefferson you know what you're gonna get you know they've been a consistently dominant team same coaching staff over the long haul um, we have two games on them so we kind of know what we're gonna get so um, I, I don't it's it's a it's, it's a problem for the defense also with, with as many people that we have involved in handling the ball, both at the quarterback, running back, and receiver position. You know, I, theoretically, they can't narrow in on one guy. So, again, you just kind of see what's out there. You make your adjustments. You not, what worked last week nece won't necessarily be what you go to the following week, but you do have the base parts of your offense that you believe in and that you, you're going to do on a consistent basis. So... Again, I think diversity is, is really good in many ways. Um, you know, I'm glad that we have the performers that we have on the offensive side of the ball, and we'll use their skills you know, when needed. Coming into this game against Washington Jefferson, they're ranked 25th in the country. Um, in the past, this has seemed to be a measuring stick kind of game where uh, 2019, you, you really you know, you had a terrific game against them, probably one of the better games the team has played in the last few years. Yeah. Um, and, and it really translates through to the rest of the season. So can you talk about the importance of this game at this point in the season and how that translates forward to the rest of the year? Well, I mean, their preseason ranked 
you know, number one in our conference. They were picked to win the conference. So, I mean, that that's the way I look at it. You know, they, they're the favorites to win the conference. We're going against them. We have a great opportunity uh, to make our mark on the conference, but yet we still have seven more games to go. You know, last year, I believe they were also the preseason pick, and Carnegie Mellon ended up, ended up winning it after starting the season one and two. So, you know, you can't overemphasize the game because there are there's a lot of conference games left, but it's obviously a big game. Our kids are pumped for it. So many of our kids are Western PA uh, high school kids, and this is a big game on, on their minds. It's a big game on, on our coaches' minds, but it's not the only game in our thoughts as we go through the season. Coach, thank you for taking a couple of minutes to join us today before our kickoff. We'll be back in a few as Case Western Reserve University will be taking on Washington and Jefferson. Big game from DeSanto Field under the lights when we come back. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4000 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. There's a look at the Spartans as they break the banner and they head onto the field here at DeSanto Field, the home of the Case Western Reserve University football team, soccer teams, and just about anybody else that wants to play here. This is a, a beautiful setting for college football, no matter what the division. You see the marching band bookending the football team as they rush out the captains are heading to the middle of the field for the Spartans one two and three gotta like it that way Ben Barney Colin Schuster and Drew Saxton the fifth year starting quarterback they'll match up against the presidents for the coin toss we'll see who will get first momentum here how important is getting the ball first in your eyes, Steve? Or is it more important to set maybe a tone defensively, especially against an offensively explosive opponent as the Spartans have tonight? I'm a little biased. I always liked when we had the ball first. You know, you have that all that pregame warm-up. You go out of the locker room, you're nice, you're hot, you're ready. And then, you know, if your defense goes out there, then you have to sit on the sidelines and wait, and you kind of cool off a little bit. It's a lot nicer when you get the ball first because you just get out there and score. Well, you're going to get your wish, the former offensive right tackle of the Spartans, because Washington and Jefferson won tonight's opening toss. They have elected to take the kick in the second half, so Case Western Reserve will be on offense first. And it is an explosive offense led by that fifth-year senior, Drew Saxton, who, as I said before, is certainly on his way to setting all sorts of records this year behind center for the Spartans. Case comes into this football game, one win, low, no losses. Their one win was a week ago at Waynesburg, 45-31, in a game that they led 21-3 at. And in a game that you heard Coach Debs in the pregame show tell John Swartz that defensively he thought his team was playing really well in that game till just before the half. They gave up a late touchdown just before the half, and that turned into kind of a rollover into the second half. And the game was much tighter than it should have been. But uh, tonight they'll have their hands full because Washington and Jefferson, as they get ready to kick it off, they come in two wins, no losses, and they have had big scores in both of their wins. 35 points against John Carroll, 52 points last week at St. Vincent. So they can score it. But as Coach Depp said in the pregame show, that's a staff over there for Washington and Jefferson that's been there pretty much, you know, the key components of it for the last 20 years, very much like Coach Debs and his coordinating staff. Mm -hmm. So you know what you're getting. Yes. Same offense, same defense. Probably hasn't changed much over the past 20 years. So it's really easy. If you only have two games to tape on them, you have all years past. Spartans will receive it at the 10-yard line, and we are underway here at DeSanto Field. And there is already the first penalty flag thrown, and it was thrown in the backside of that play. So my guess is it will be holding. I think it was, uh, they're going to get him for a block in the back. So that, bla or that block in the back is on Samuel Ward, and that will be a 
half the distance of the goal line. So from the 14, yeah. they'll march it back to the 7. Boxcast showed it real nice right there. That was uh, about as blatant as they come, unfortunately, for the Spartans. The Boxcast replay. Very thankful for Boxcast and their affiliation with us here at Case Western Reserve University this college football season. So Drew Saxton and his mates will start deep in their own end. One back in the backfield, that's Antonio Orsini. His name we will call a lot tonight, and he'll probably get the ball on this first play. That's Orsini, straight under center, up to the 10-yard line. He'll pick up three and set up a second and long. Offensive line-wise, and I'm talking the guy in the booth here next to me, my partner, Steve Bocci, offensive lineman his entire life, all the way back to when he was little. Offensive line, style-wise, confidence-wise, performance-wise, how important is an opening drive to kind of, you know, lock in and feel like we may have an edge? It's really important because it's your time to kind of feel out these uh, defense linemen you're going up against. You know, you watch them all week in film, but you never really know, you know, how hard are they, how fast are they, until you actually get to go out there and hit them once or twice. And a penalty before the snap. I think the guard moved on that one. It is a procedure call on the Spartans. Let's look at their offensive line. Josh Blamer, the left tackle out of Pittsburgh, 6'5", 275. He's a senior. Peter Kelly, the left guard out of Iskayuna, New York, 6'4", 285. He's also a senior. Jace Merritt, the center out of Fort Worth, Texas, 5'10", 250, junior. Tony Livner, the right tackle, and Paul Bruno, the right guard. They go senior, senior, junior, junior, sophomore. Pressure, Orsini with a little screen, a little dump pass. Antonio gets up to the seven yard line. He'll pick up maybe one yard, you know, just past maybe, the line yeah. of scrimmage. It'll set up a third and long for the Spartans. Good tempo pay, good call. You can see Bruno there kind of gets held up trying to get off on that screen. Unfortunately, forces Orsini wide and shortens the game there. Coach Debelak said he wanted to work with pace. He wanted to work quickly, especially against this defensive front of Washington and Jefferson. A week ago at St. Vincent, they really got to the quarterback a lot. So you'll see Saxton with quick drops, receivers with short routes. Saxton's in the shotgun. It's a third and 10. Saxton still looking. He's going to run it. Needs a block. And he gets knocked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. He'll be well short of a first down. And the presidents have forced the first punt of the afternoon or evening. That was a pretty interesting look there by the WNJ defense. You can see they walk their two inside linebackers up, and then the one inside linebacker kind of sits there and spies. I mean, Drew's not really a running quarterback. I'm not sure why they wouldn't send all five or what their whole intention was there. Maybe these uh, presidents are a little bit worried about the Spartan screen game. So Ken Barney is going to stand back there, and he will be – actually, it might be Rhodes that's now punting for the Spartans. He'll punt it. He'll stand back in his own end zone. It's a good punt. Drives Chris Church all the way back to the 42. Good coverage by the Spartans. Church going to run out of it, though. Oh, good hit. That hit hard at the 45. I think that was uh, Gage Samuel. Dusler. Tell the Spartan punt coverage units fired up. They're getting down there and getting after it. So here we go with Washington and Jefferson's first offensive possession of the game. This is an offense that averages 482 yards per game in just two games. 305 of those 482 are through the air. The quarterback is Colton Jones, and he's standing at his own 40. Can't ask for a better field position to start the game. Jones will throw it. Over the middle, pass is complete near the first down marker, and it went to Anthony Rosati. Rosati, a 5'7", junior. Got 12 catches already in two games, make it 13. Good start to his season. I think a nice little interesting... Uh, thing to watch here is the WJ offense line is not as big as they have been in years past and the Spartan you know defense line has never been known for their size so I think it'll be a good matchup for both units there that was Justin Huss on the carry Huss 150 yards rushing so far on 33 carries in two games it's Huss and it's Holmes in the backfield Raymond Holmes a sophomore Huss is a junior both of them share that load equally 
second and nine for the Presidents. Opening quarter here at DeSanto Field. Jones is going to throw. And he's got a wide open Rosati at the 20. Boy, Rosati found a soft spot in that K's defense and give yeah. the quarterback credit. With pressure on him, Colton Jones found him. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Nice route by the receiver to find the soft spot in the zone. Kind of settled right in there. Nice gain for W and J. Presidents all the way inside the Spartan 20 now. There's a going to be a motion call on Justin Huss. You know, everybody kind of moved. Huss was the obvious one. I wonder if the center lost track of the count. I think it was uh, his left guard there. Uh, he started pulling a little too early, just trying to get a little head start there. It was fun pregame uh, as the Spartans were warming up. Steve and I were on the field, and Donald Day the third, who was a former Spartan running back, came over. He's now on the coaching staff to greet Steve, and I asked Donald if Steven ever held for him when he was blocking and trying to create <laughs> holes and Donald just smiled and said Steve says he never held so that's what we're going with Colton Jones to throw looking left still looking gonna get it down the sideline but it will fall incomplete that was TJ Troxel the wide out number 87 excellent coverage there by the Spartan defense and the Spartan defense line you know with three four guys is really starting to pressure uh, W and J here it's a if you can get pressure with three or four guys you're in good shape Second and 15, that Spartan front, A.J. Dadowski, the defensive end, 6'1", 230-pound junior. Michael Kelly and R.J. Ayers will tackle that nose guard spot. And then Caden Tong, talk about Caden after this snap. What a game he had against Waynesburg. Oh, yeah. Jones again, blitzes on, little bubble screen set up. Huss with it inside the 20, and he's brought down at the 19-yard line. So what looked like was going to be a big game, Steve, that Spartan defense really swarmed and closed quickly. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good indicator that the Spartan defense is playing good. They obviously Coach Miller was on them all week about this offense, and they're really coming out fired up. Caden Tong, number ten on the defensive line for the Spartans, a week ago against Waynesburg. This is in one game. He had nine tackles, five and a half were tackles for loss, two were sacks, all were career highs in a single game. Number ten, Caden Tong. Third and long, Jones to throw, he's pressured and he's sacked at the 27 yard line. Great pressure, awesome sack for the Spartans as they get in on Jones and they get to him. Way to dial up the blitz there, looks like Huss didn't see the guy coming off the edge there, gets on in there, obviously there for a sack. The Spartans only brought five on that play. That was Ryan Cabrera. Coach Debelak talked about him pregame. He's a, an exciting young linebacker that he really thinks is very quick to the ball and you saw it there look at this it's fourth and 20 from the 27 and the presidents have decided to go for it Colton Jones again to throw gonna have to make up a lot of yards deep ball if it's complete it will be a touchdown but it's incomplete so they went to the end zone try to get out there to John Paduzzi I like you'll the, notice with the yeah. corner cover they did a good job yeah I like the I like the call there by Sirianni you know you're kind of stuck there and Really no man's land in D3 football. Excellent ball by Jones. Put it only where his receiver could get it. Dominic Says in on that defense at the cornerback spot for the Spartans. So a good hold. Washington and Jefferson started out at the 42, then had a big play, a pass play that went to Rosati to put them deep in case territory right away. But that Spartan defense held, so here we go. Now in at quarterback. Ian Kipp. Kipp, a sophomore out of Menor. Ball fake and a pass. And it's in and out of the oh. hands. They'll say incomplete. <laughs> he handed it off to Alex Fromberg, who's the third of the four quarterback system. And they try to get the pass off to Isaiah Arrington, and it almost worked. Oh, I really like that play call. I know Coach Debs loves his trick plays, but now that he's got all these quarterbacks that are such dynamic athletes, oh. Pandora's box has been open. He's got Spartan Saxton, offense. his fifth year senior. He's got Fromberg, a junior. He's got Kip, the sophomore who can run and throw it. Fromberg's the one who just threw it. And then Aaron Phillips, a first year player out of Medina Highland High School. So we will see all four of those quarterbacks in either a quarterback situation or a throwing halfback or a slot receiver or Sini with the handoff. And Antonio up near the 30 yard line on a second and long. Good outside zone play there. Just kind of set the pace, you know. Not every play can be a nice, interesting trick play. Two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks. 
however many he throws out there. As an offensive lineman, Steve, does it matter who's a quarterback? I, I, I would bet it did if you were the center just because of the communication and the and the connection that you have. But does it matter? I think it matters because I, I was I had the chance in my time at Case Block for two very different quarterbacks and Rob Kuda and Drew Saxton. Rob, when you go set up for your pass play, oh. Show Over me. the middle, receiver open, breaking to the sideline. He's got one man to beat inside the 20 and run out of bounds at the 15 yard line. How about that? Oh. Coming up, it's Riley Nurick, who is quickly becoming Colin or Drew Saxton's favorite wideout. That was a savvy veteran move, move there by Drew Saxon. Gets a little pressure, steps up in the pocket, but notice he keeps his eyes downfield, finds the open guy. You know, another thing he kept his eye on is he kept his eye on the, the, the yard marker because he knew he was dangerously close yes. to the line of scrimmage before he threw that football. Great job by the fifth-year senior. And Nurek, I mean, Nurek had, he has nine catches in two games, 93 yards. He had... I think four of those nine in the first half against Waynesburg a week ago. Spartans inside the 10, Orsini will try it up the middle. There's a flag thrown and based on Drew Sexton clapping his hands with frustration, it looks to go against the Spartans. Oh. So, Steve, that is second offensive possession, already the third yes. penalty. Which is not which is not the Spartan brand of football, especially small mental mistakes like that. Five guys in the backfield. I mean, Spartans got a lot of smart guys out there. They should be able to line up correctly. You know, Saxton a year ago, he had balls caught by nine different receivers in this offensive set. He had that many weapons to throw to. And they ranged from anywhere to over 100 yards receiving all the way to nearly 1,000. This year, he's really started to settle in on Wykowski and Nurek. Drew will dump it over the middle. It was Nurek again. And Nurek maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. The ball will be marked at the 13-yard line. Yeah, that's interesting. He's not really last year with the nine different guys he was throwing balls to. But I think he's just it's one of those things where he just builds up a trust level with certain guys. And he's those guys just happen to always be the ones he's looking for. Because, you know, when he's panicked and he's running around there, you're looking at the guys you trust to catch that ball. Well, one that he does trust as well, Noah Coyne. Coyne is winding up or lining up to his right. Coyne wears 17. Well, watch him. He's 6'4". He's an easy target in the end zone. Saxon, ball fake, handoff. Touch. Oh, in and out of the hands. I thought the fullback, Sean Michael James, had it. Oh, he had it. He was already playing his touchdown dance. When you're a fullback, you have to plan the <laughs> touchdown dance. Just just a little bit outside his reach. Spartans had a touchdown. Yeah. They had that oh. defensive backfield. Tyler Sabo right there for the president's beat. Sabo's one to watch, the senior. Got two interceptions this year. One of those was returned 63 yards for a touchdown. That was a week ago. So here the Spartans are, third and 13 from the 13. So there is no first down on the line here, just a touchdown. Saxton again will throw it. Pressure. Drew with an opportunity. He'll tuck and run. He'll go out of bounds at the 10. And here comes the place kicking team. Ben Barney will be out on the field for the Spartans right now. So good coverage. Credit the Presidents for staying with the receivers throughout that lengthy play. Yes, Drew really extended that play there with his legs. The Spartan off its line has got to give him a couple, couple more seconds back there. I'm really impressed with Drew so far, throwing on the run, moving around the pocket, but he shouldn't be doing that. Those offensive linemen need to do a better job protecting him. Cooper Imram will snap it. Michael Stewie will hold it. And the place kicker is Ben Barney. Kick goes right into the offensive line. Barney actually catches it, then drops it. Now Stewie has it, and he's tackled. And Washington and Jefferson will have the football at the 14. That is not what you wanted. That was a low kick. That went right into the helmets of the down linemen. Mm. Barney has only kicked one field goal this year in two games. They've only tried one field goal. He's one of one. It was a 25-yarder. Yeah, that should have been a chip shot there for him. So, Steve, both teams have had opportunities, and both defenses have stood the test. Which is surprising because a classic case W&J matchup usually involves a lot of scoring. Nothing up the middle. Breaking to the outside. 
Carrying the football was Justin Huss. Be Spartans had good defense. Beautiful open field tackle there by Colin Schuster, the veteran. Schuster, a graduate student. Ten tackles on the season this year. Western Pennsylvania guy. A lot of people from Western PA on the field right now. Washington, Pennsylvania, the home of Washington and Jefferson. Then a lot of Spartans come from Western Pennsylvania. Huss again, the handoff. They needed eight, they'll get two. Yeah, Coach Debs and Coach Slush have really done an excellent job at recruiting from the Whippeals, or the Whips as it's known uh, around Case Western. Uh, getting a lot of guys out here. My partner, from just off 71 in the Bagley Road area, Berea Mid Park grad. Steve Bocci wearing his Berea Mid Park tie tonight. <laughs> Coach Debelak pointed out. Yeah, he got on me for that one. Third and six from the 18. Spartan showing a blitz from the outside right. Here comes the pressure. Stepping up Gone. and going down and fumbling the football all the way back to the nine yard line. Boy, Marco Toth almost jumped on it. Here's that pressure, Steve. That's right there, Caden Tong. His motor is really, really impressing me. I haven't seen a defense lineman with that much motor in quite a few years. You notice he hits him with the spin there, That uh, the tackle, tackle keeps going, he just spins right back up, and then you got Jones right there in your lap. You know, Coach Deb said that Tong is a freakish athlete for a defensive lineman. Yeah. He said you really don't see the type of athlete that this young man is in that position. Punts off, it's a good one. Fair catch for the Spartans at the 41 yard line. And field position in favor of Case Western Reserve University. We'll take a 30 second timeout. It's no score, 337 left in the opening quarter. Have you heard the news that Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards? Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100. Saxton in the shotgun as the Spartans come out of this timeout. Drew will throw it. Leaves the pocket as he's had to. Little floater and it's caught at the 21 yard line. Oh, looks like he came out when he hit the ground there. Ugh. Boy, it was a perfectly touched pass. Watch the touch on this pass to Noah Coyne. Drew once again having to throw on the run but still delivering a dime. A dime to coin. Wow. There's something there. Got to work on it. <laughs> nice crowd on hand here tonight at the Santo Field. It's a good crowd in the home opener against Johns Hopkins as well. It's a beautiful night. Just a beautiful night in northeastern Ohio. We are just east of the city of Cleveland, near Severance Hall, home of the Cleveland Orchestra. Saxton, pass over the middle. It's complete. That's Ethan Dollum. Dollum caught it at the 36 and was tackled at the 36. Good protection. Drew had time, let the routes develop. Start to get a little rhythm here. Well, pace is one of the things that Coach Debs talked about that he thought really works well for his offense. If they can stay on pace and keep that defense from really settling in. So Saxton and Orsini are in the backfield for the Spartans. It's a third down and five, big play, from the Washington and Jefferson 36-yard line. Such a big play, the Spartans are going to call a timeout. We'll take one, two. It's Case Western Reserve nothing, Washington and Jefferson nothing, 243 left to play first quarter.
choose excellence in the intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider... Third down and five. Saxton out of that timeout in the shotgun. Looks to throw. Pressure. Left side. Caught. First down out at the 28-yard line. So the Spartans got what they want. And that was an outside pass in an open area to Michael Wykowski. Here's Wykowski, number 19. And here they are, hitting him with a little tempo. Orsini will take the handoff. Going to go right under the center. Jace Merritt followed Jace and Peter Kelly and Tony Thibner right up the middle. Orsini will get it down to the 25, I think they'll mark it on. So it'll be a pickup of four. I like to see Coach Stapp stick with that pace there because as soon as you start getting pace, that defense starts getting tired. And Gage Dusler will replace Antonio Orsini. So a fresh back in the backfield. Dusler had two touchdowns, his first collegiate touchdown, then one other last week against Waynesburg. He's right behind his quarterback, Drew Saxton. Spartans with the ball to 25. Dusler with the handoff. Again, they try that spot in the middle. They like that soft spot in the middle, and Dusler gets it up to the 22. He'll pick up three. It'll set up a third down and two, maybe three. Third and a long, long two. I don't know if WJ thought he fumbled there or something, but uh, still Spartan ball, thankfully. So second big third down situation for Coach Debelak, as you see Coach Debelak left of the screen and his Spartans. You thought maybe Coach Debs was going to draw up a trick play during that timeout, didn't you? I did. I saw it, you know, calling him timeout right there in a big play. He's got all these new weapons. I thought he was going to try him out, but. Saxon will hand it off to Deusler. Gage has got some work to do. He's got to break some tackles, unable to do that, and he's down at the 21-yard line. Coming up, making a nice tackle for Washington and Jefferson is Tyler Zabo. So now it's decision time. And it looks like it's already been made. Yeah, it looks like he still has that first kick in his mind. Second time in three possessions that Case Western Reserve has been inside the 20. Or they're actually not quite yet inside it. They need to get to the 19. Last time they were down all the way to the 13-yard line. A field goal attempt got blocked. Deuce learned the backfield. His fullback will lead the way. He'll get the handoff. He's met at the line of scrimmage. He goes mm. nowhere. Gets to the 21. Coming up and making that hit from the outside linebacker spot was Drew Ehrlich. Number two. That looked like just a nice, simple inside zone play. I don't know if Drew might have missed his read on that. They might have blocked the wrong guy here. We could take a look at the replay. Oh, it actually looks like a power play where he crashes down. But Spartan defense has been holding well. Let's see if they continue that. So possession on downs turns to Washington and Jefferson. Now just 16 seconds left in this opening quarter. We want to thank BoxCast for our BoxCast replays all season long here with Spartan football. Pass is out, and it is complete. Colton Jones to John Paduzzi. Looked like a design uh, kind of like slide there for Jones. I wonder if w &J is starting to get worried about the Spartan front. So that's going to wind out the first quarter. No score under a beautiful September sky. The lights are on at DeSanto Field. If you're on campus or somewhere east of Cleveland, come on down and join us here at DeSanto. If you'd just like to sit home and watch it, we're glad you're with us. We're going to take a timeout. The 15-minute second quarter is up next. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. 
second quarter here from DeSanto Field, a scoreless game. Mm -hmm. Anything that has surprised you so far? The way the defense has been playing. I mean, they've really shut down the offenses on both sides, and this is turning into a bit of a slugfest. I thought it was going to be an Old West shootout, but it looks like Have we're more an Iowa-Purdue matchup. Well, the defense has the presidents of Washington and Jefferson in front of them right now. Washington and Jefferson's got to be a little bit stunned, I think. A week ago at St. Vincent, they had 539 yards in total offense. They reached nearly 500 against John Carroll in their season opener. Colton Jones on a second and three. They'll go in the backfield with the handoff, and that Spartan defensive front not letting the Presidents get much running room. That's Huss again, stopped quickly. These guys are playing out of their minds tonight. You know, when you're used to, you're in your W and J or case, and you're used to getting all these yards and all these points, when it's not going your way, it, there's a small little mental thing that kind of gets in the back of your head, and it kind of makes everything a little harder, and you stop thinking about all the small things. Pass, quick out. They need three. They get need to get to the 31, and they're not going to get there. How about that cover <laughs> defense? This is as, as quick a play as you can possibly get. Breaking through the blockers. Spartans were everywhere. That was Dominic Says along with Ryan Cabrera. Cabrera came all the way over from his linebacker spot. Oh, yeah, these guys are flying around. Both of them shed their blocks out there. Just good defensive football. Dollum standing at his 35-yard line. He will return for the Spartans. Spartans got 10 guys on that line. They do not break. And there's a whistle before the snap. Oh. Oh. Beautiful catch by the official. It's a motion penalty on Washington and Jefferson. I originally thought, and it's why I said, oh, I thought that they motioned towards the case side like mm -hmm. it was an offside. And that would have given Washington and Jefferson a first down. Maybe they're still in first quarter, first quarter mode. Devin Wyant, the punter for Washington and Jefferson. There's Devin. He'll punt it from the 10. Nice punt calling for the fair catch at the 33 for the Spartans is Dollum. And let's see who comes out to start this offensive possession at quarterback. Well, you get a good look there of the just the beautiful setting around DeSanto Field, the dormitories that fill the western side of this football field. Great place to watch a football game, too. Well, and we see students on a regular basis standing along the ivy fence or in their dorm room looking through the window. I think they're having a little watch party up there in the uh, corner there, where that north northeast corner. That would be the southwest <laughs> corner. That's right. why you're a civil engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Fake handoff. Keeping it is Kip, the running quarterback. Ian Kip, uh, in two games this year, Steve, he's carried the football 14 times for 102 yards, including a touchdown. He's thrown it five times, completed four for 114 yards, and two touchdowns. So he himself has been responsible for 18 points. I think he had all 14 points in that uh, Johns Hopkins game. Saxton now back in at quarterback. Deucler in the backfield with him. We haven't seen Orsini in like the last three plays. The first two here and then the last two of the last possession. I hope Antonio is not on the sideline hurt. It's a quick hit out and a complete pass to Wykowski. That'll pick up positive yards. It's going to be a second and one situation. Orsini missed a lot you of heard the news? training camp. And then they weren't sure if he would play in that opener against Johns Hopkins. But he did. And he, of course, is their senior tailback that led the team in rushing a year ago. So we'll keep our eye on that as the night plays out. It's Deusler now at the right hip of his quarterback. Saxton and Gage will get the handoff. Gage trying to get a yard. He'll get that plus two more and move the ball near the 45-yard line. It's a good way to convert there on third down. That's a good stable of a good offense. If you can't convert that third and one with just a simple zone play, you're probably that you know, it's good measuring stick. If you can't make that third and one a simple zone play, you probably don't deserve to win this ball. So game. Steve, when you say zone play, describe that to the audience. So zone play it's a it's a running scheme. You have basically 
two different types zone and power is mostly what we ran power is more direct you're going to a location you have people pulling and you're the linemen the linemen are pulling the ball's going in a certain place zone it's kind of you're just blocking to an area and then that it's up to that running back to find the gaps there Saxton's gonna get sacked in the backfield he was trying to have time they had a deep route running but that Washington and Jefferson defense just got to him Dawson Dietz the sophomore with the sack yeah, it did a little moving up front and sliding around, and you can see the left guard there. Uh, who is that? Kelly had to slide out. Uh, you got to protect Drew better. Helmet came off, so he's got to come out here for a play. But luckily, you have Ian Kip coming in. Kip, a six foot two, two hundred and ten pound sophomore, Menor Cardinal. What a great program at at Menor for decades now. Kip with pressure. Kip just going to throw it into the dirt. This WJ defensive line is providing a lot of pressure with those four guys up front. And Coach Dabbs was concerned about that as he talked to you and I on the sideline before the game. They have, they go two seniors and then two talented sophomores in the middle. Alex Keith, Dawson Dietz, Jaron Timmons, and Adam Radzinski. Radzinski had a strip sack that set up a touchdown in the John Carroll game. Keith's got three and a half sacks and three tackles for a loss. Dietz, two and a half sacks and three tackles for a loss. So those front four can get after it. And they will no, no doubt be doing that right now on third and 13 for the Spartans. They're at the 42. They need to get to the 45 of Washington and Jefferson. And this is Saxton to throw it. Saxton gets blown up at his own 30. Gage Dusler was trying to block a Alex Keith, the defensive end. And Keith at 6'2", 225, won the battle against the 5'10", 170, Dusler. Yeah, these W and J uh, defense line, one of their biggest traits, they're mean football players, and they will get after you, and they're going to hit you hard. So this Spartan, as a collective unit, their offensive line, these running backs really need to make sure to protect Drew because if he's going to be back there taking hits like that every drive, it's not going to end well. Just a couple of minutes gone in this second quarter in a scoreless game. Punts off, it will land short and take a Spartan roll. Case will down it at the 28 yard line. Washington and Jefferson wearing those whites on the roads will come out and they'll set up their offense next. Preseason conference number one, the presidents were of Washington and Jefferson. They were picked to win the PAC. You're looking at their leader, their junior quarterback, Colton Jones. Colton Jones had a career high 359 yards passing a week ago against St. Vincent. He looks to pass again. And he does a nice job and doing a great job as An Anthony Rosati. Rosati finding, again, that seam in that, in that Spartan defense. He runs to the spot, mm -hmm. and Jones finds him. Yeah, that is really impressive. He, you know, the Spartans run a lot of zone here, and he's just kind of slicing right through, right behind those linebackers, right in front of those safeties. Jones let the defense come through. This is Huss with the quick pass. And going to get about a yard, and that's it. Spartan defense quick to the ball that time. The presidents are really trying to slow down this pass rush with all these screens, but look, thankfully the Spartan outside linebackers and safeties are really covering it well. Well, Ryan Cabrera doing it better than anybody right now. Second and ten. This is Jones with pressure. Too much pressure. Ball's been fumbled, picked up by a down lineman, and then <laughs> smoked in the backfield. That was Tong. You'll see it here in the replay. Leon Middleton just had what he dreamed about his entire life. Marco Toth and Tong back there to get to the quarterback. And Steve, my offensive lineman teammate, referring to the left tackle of Washington and Jefferson, 
getting a ball and having an opportunity to run with it. Screen is set up. This is Huss with blockers. Needs to get to the 47. He'll get up to the 38, so he'll be, well, actually, he needs to get all the way inside case territory. The 47 would be the original, original line of scrimmage. They're really doing a good job on those short, those, you know, those quick dump yeah. screens. And you can tell the Spartan defense line now. You watch that nose tackle number 54 there. He, once he felt no one blocking him, these guys are taught, if you get through that easy, it's not right. That's a screenplay. You got to turn and look for the ball. And the Spartan defense is finally starting to realize that. So fourth and 16, they'll punt with pressure. Punt is off. Dahlem set to receive it at the 22. Called for the fair catch. And let's see if some pace and rhythm can happen now for this Spartan offense. Steve, you mentioned it's been a game of defense, and it, and it really has. And there's Coach Debelak in the middle of that huddle. You know, he's an offensive-minded coach. He and his 19th year at Case Western Reserve University, 126 wins, 52 losses. At that 10-0 season that my partner played on, mm -hmm. six UAA titles, five NCAA bids, two PAC titles. Coach Debs has done it all here as the leader of the Spartan football team. He'll be a Hall of Famer one day. We'll be at the banquet saying remember when. But right now, it's Saxton with pressure, nowhere to go. There's a holding, two holding penalties, and Drew's just going to throw it out of bounds. Boy, that defensive front is absolutely dominating the Spartan offensive line right now. Not only just on that play, but in the last two offensive series for the Spartans. What's Drew? He has absolutely no time. No, I mean, he, he the snap's getting back to him, and he's already moving off his mark. I mean, this Spartan offense line really needs to come together and get more formidable. So Dawson Dietz is coming from a down spot. He's a defensive tackle, but Drew Ehrlich, number two, who's often in that backfield, he, he, he floats around as a linebacker. Wouldn't that be the best job on the field defensively, to be the mm -hmm. linebacker that can just kind of go? Yeah, find the weak spot on the offensive the line, spot. figure out where they're sliding and kind of go where they're not. You need an athlete at that position. And Ehrlich certainly has proven in the opening stages of this football game that he is the person for the presidents. Handoff will go to Orsini. Antonio cuts it back at the 10. He's across the 15, nearly all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. Antonio gets it to the 20, so it'll be a second and 11. That's better than second and 21. I really like the play call there, running outside zone. Get these guys moving laterally because this offense, this defensive front is just going forward, firing off the ball hard, trying to get after Drew. Well, if you start getting moving ladder and, and obviously as an offensive lineman, you know the play's going wide right. So you can get a jump on these guys, and Orsini finds a beautiful, nice seam there to cut it back up. Saxton with his fullback, Sean Michael James in the slot, set the block for him. Orsini still in the game. Drew will pass. Little screen. Dahlem with it at the 20, breaks a tackle to the 25, and he gets tackled at the 27 yard line. So Ethan was bottled up at the line of scrimmage, but somehow was able to elude being tackled and sets up a big play. It's an important third down. Spartan offense needs to convert this, because if not, you're going to be putting from your own about 15-yard line, and you're going to put that ball and give W&J great field position, who they're due to explode. It's a four-receiver set on a third and four against a defensive front that the Spartans are still trying to figure out. Saxon, quick pass. It's at the 30 complete, but tackled immediately. Tying them up and tackling them for Washington and Jefferson is Drew Ehrlich from his outside linebacker spot. He closed on him real quick. That was a beautiful play there by Ehrlich. Dallum got the ball and had really no time to do anything. They needed four. They got three. They got up to the 31. A first down is awaiting them at the 32, but deep into their own end. Spartans will punt it. Good punt. Fair catch held for at the 35 and received. Five minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the opening half. It's Case Western Reserve, nothing. Washington and Jefferson, nothing. We'll keep it right here because both coaches are playing with pace. Rhythm, no huddles, not much time in between possessions or downs. It is not a game 
where our advertisers are going to get everything they paid for. <laughs> no, I do not say that. They will. We'll get them in. Trust us. And off. First back through, tries the left side, and going absolutely nowhere was Raymond Holmes. Another nice play there by the Spartan defensive front. But I can tell you what, Coach Debs, as well as his defense is playing, as ecstatic as he is about his defense, he's nervous because he knows W and J. I mean, you don't score, you don't get 500 yards, you know, two games and all this other, averaging 43 points a game. They'll eventually score here, and this Spartan offense needs to sit down here and figure out what the heck's going on. Fake to Holmes. Pass over the middle. Incomplete. Spartans look like, well, they had a, they had a, Marco Toth was out there coming up, and I thought Marco might get to that ball and intercept it. I think you had three Spartan defenders closer to that ball than one wide, uh, w &J wide receiver. Well, the young man that's done a great job of finding the, the holes in the zone or the seams in the defense is Anthony Rosati. And Rosati's going to come out wide to the right of his quarterback, Colton Jones, on third and nine. We'll watch number seven. Spartans back off a blitz. Jones is going to throw it. Penalty flag down. It's short. And if it's a holding call, I'm guessing the Spartans will decline that penalty. It is a hold. Yep. A decline puts Washington and Jefferson in a fourth and nine. And that's what it will do. Coach Debelak running the sidelines. 19th year. That's why he stays in such good shape. It was neat. Uh, maybe an hour before the game, Steve and I were on the field, and Coach Debs walked up and a big smile on his face, gave Steve a slap on the shoulder, shaked his hand, and there's a motion penalty on Washington and Jefferson. They're going to bring this one back. But it's got to make you feel nice as a former player when, you know, you're four years removed from mm -hmm. the football program. Coach yeah. Debs comes up, and not only, you know, very happy to see you, but he also recognized that you were wearing the colors of your high school and, 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 yeah. and pointed that out too. No, it, it, was, it felt really good. I mean, like, you know, everyone always says your football is family all this stuff, but as far as the Case Western Reserve University program, once you get a part of it and you join it and you play here, all these coaches remember you. They all – I text Coach Slash every once in a while, see, you know, keep up to date with him and then all the guys we play with. I mean, a lot of guys still tune in, follow along. And, you know, we're all very invested in the program. Beautiful punt. Drives Dahlem all the way back to his 15. That ball went, let's Ooh. see, 20, 30, 55 yards in the air. That was a great punt. He was over there celebrating after it. That's awesome. It is a spiral the entire time. Look at it. Beautiful camera work by our crew here. We'll introduce them as the game goes on. Five minutes, four seconds left in this opening half. It's been a scoreless first half, a remarkably scoreless first half because there are two offenses on this field tonight that put the ball in the end zone. Nobody's done it yet. Saxon's at quarterback. Orsini's in the backfield with him. Drew's going to throw it. Ball batted down at the offensive line. That's Dawson Dietz. Just gets his hands up there and gets lucky. But great play there. Is it luck? I think it's luck. Yeah? But Blamer should know there. He's a veteran guy. If you got a guy with your hands up, that's when you kind of, as an offensive lineman, either knock them down or if he jumps, he's off his feet, that's when you get your nice uh, pancake block and okay. film room celebration. Second and ten. Spartan offensive line trying to figure out that defensive front. This is Orsini with the football. Antonio making something out of nothing. Orsini's going to get it up to the 24. That's a nine-yard pickup. Third and one for the Spartans. Let's see what they decide to do here. A little tempo. Saxton remains the quarterback. Orsini remains his mate in the backfield. They need a yard against a very stingy Washington and Jefferson defense. Orsini stuffed in the backfield. He'll lose a yard. 
It looked like Drew and Orsini were running two different plays. It did. One was going zone right, the other was going zone left. And once again, it's a three and out. So there's a frustrated offensive line and quarterback and running back coming off the field. Yeah, these guys are going to know the defensive pizza after this half of football. They're going to need a defensive pizza? Oh, they're going to owe the defensive owe pizza the defensive after this, pizza. yeah. Gotcha. Film study on Wednesday. Offensive line's buying. Well, Washington and Jefferson set up to have real good field position. Punt is off. Fielded at the 40. Tackled at the 44. So the Spartan special teams do a nice job. Limit the punt return to four yards for Washington and Jefferson and Chris Church Jr. But presidents still have the football at the 44-yard line. Really putting the Spartan defense to the test here. I mean, just given W&J time after time again, beautiful starts to drive. So let's see if the Spartan defense can continue to hold them. So Washington and Jefferson will get the ball to start the third quarter too. So they could literally end the first half on this drive and start the second half. Handoff first back through with room to the 50-yard line is Raymond Holmes. They'll mark him at the 49, so he'll pick up four. Clock winds at 317. Washington and Jefferson with all three of their timeouts. Huss will replace Holmes in that W and J backfield. He's standing next to his quarterback. Marco Toth showing blitz on the outside. He's coming. Quarterback, lots of time. And because there was a hold as Huss gets the pass, play's going to come back. I believe it's going to go against the outside tackle, Tyler Karajin, holding Marco Toth. He kind of goes out of the screen. We didn't see it. Yeah. But Toth with speed and quickness. Toth 5'8", 180 as a linebacker, matching up <laughs> against the 6'1", 270 right tackle. Sometimes it's hard to find those little guys, isn't it? You played at 280. Is. Yes. I, I would much rather block a big guy, a big, strong guy, than a slow, fast guy any day of the week. They're slippery. You know, you can't really get your hands on them, and they move all around the place. Not that you, Steve Bocci, former right tackle on an undefeated 10-0 Spartan team, would ever use your hands to hold anybody never, who never. was rushing your quarterback. Second and long. Jones needs 15. Oh. Ball over the middle, in and out. Well, the hands of his very steady wideout, Rosati. I think that was tipped there by the Spartan defense. He really tried to squeeze that in there. I think there was a little bit of a finger tip deflection, just enough to set Rosati off from catching it. Looked like Ryan Cabrera. We've been saying his name a lot yeah. tonight. Coach Debs talked to, about Cabrera on the sidelines pregame to us. Screen out on a third and long. Needs 16. They'll pick up maybe eight. Ball at the 48. It sets up a fourth and long. And with two minutes and 18 seconds on the clock, and with the Spartans still with two timeouts, the Presidents will elect to punt the football. Because if they go for it here and they don't get it, then Case Western Reserve has it midfield area with two minutes and two timeouts. True, but is Case Western Reserve University's offense giving you any reason to think they'll they'll do anything? They'll do anything? Have not yet so far tonight. That's I, I'm no coach, but I, I think I'd be going for this one right here. Dollum set to receive it for the Spartans. Low kick. It's going to go over Dollum's head and with a bounce into the end zone. That's good for two reasons. One, it stops the clock at a minute 39. And secondly, it gives the Spartans some field position that they wouldn't have gotten if Dahlem would have received it. There's a good look at some of the Case Western Reserve University students right across the field from us in front of their dormitory space. And as the fall turns, that ivy along that fence turns golden, red and orange and yellow, and it's just a, a beautiful place. Really, if you haven't been to DeSanto Field, just come down Euclid Avenue. Go by Severance Hall. Go by Mayfield Road. You'll find 
115th, 116th, 118th on your left. Turn left at either, any of those three streets and, and you'll find DeSanto Field. Buck 39 left to play opening half. Saxon at quarterback. He's going to roll with it. Throw it outside. Catch and out of bounds. That's <laughs> Coin with the football. Noah Coin, 6'4", sophomore. Where's a familiar number, yes. 17. I keep thinking that's Colt Morgan out there. Same body type, same number. Tall, lengthy, and yeah. great hands. Boy, it's great for that offense if they, you know, lose Morgan to graduation to bring in a young sophomore like Coyne to step in right where he has left off. Coyne has six catches in his two games over the middle. Pass caught at the 33. So that's a first down. That'll move the chains, and that's Riley Nurick. Nice route there by Nurick. Way to find a spot. Drew hits him right on the spot. Clock will start at a minute 23. Saxon looked left, went right, and out of bounds with a catch that will gain maybe a yard. Nurk, or that's Dollum on the catch. At a minute two. Working quickly. Near the sideline, caught, and out of bounds is Coin. At the 40, 38 yard line, timeout on the field. Coach Debelak has called a timeout, bringing his offense over. Here come the linemen. They'll join the rest of the football team and they'll talk over the last 54 seconds of this opening half. So here's the question Steve, do you think you have enough time, meaning with your quarterback, to throw the ball downfield? at this late stage of the opening half. Because with 54 seconds and a timeout left, you could take a couple of deep balls, at least a 15-yard route to move the move the football. Yeah. But do they have the time to do that? I don't think they do. I, I think this because is one of the of defensive those, front? Yeah, the defensive front. Drew's not really having enough time for those routes to develop and get downfield. I think Coach Debs here, he's kind of feeling it out, hitting a couple side routes, you know, getting a feel for how this offense is changing. You know, Drew's doing a lot more sliding right now on his routes, a lot more designed uh, quick outs. So, but it would be nice to see him take a shot down the field, but I don't know if they have the capability to. It's interesting that we haven't seen Ian Kipp in this series, the one of the several quarterbacks that plays, because Kipp is a an explosive runner as well as a passer. And when you're playing against this aggressive defense that comes breakneck at the quarterback, Kip could be a weapon that turns into something. Saxon's going to have to leave the pocket again. He's going to look for the sideline. He's going to slide down at the 44-yard line. That's going to keep the clock rolling. It's at 45 seconds. Did not get the first down, or they did get the first down. They're going to move the chains. That stops the clock at 45 seconds. I'm not sure. I don't think the officials yeah, are sure Yeah, I don't think they know either. <laughs> so Saxon's going to catch it. Going to look deep. Going to throw deep down the middle of the field, and it's over everyone's oh. head. Looks like his receiver got tied up there with the defense. Good thing it stops the clock, and it was a first down. Just can't break free there. It was Dallum. Dallum. Good route. I like the aggressiveness. I've always been a fan of... Uh, deep shots and late in the game or late in the game or late in the half builds confidence in the quarterback builds confidence in the receivers you know if you go out there and your coach just knees it out for you you're kind of like oh this guy doesn't trust us but the fact that Dev is out here calling plays trying to get a score up on the board should restore some confidence for these guys Wykowski and Nurick are on the left of Saxton fullbacks the only back in the backfield that's Michael James Saxton looked left trouble comes up thinks about throwing does to Wykowski at the 40 needs to get out of bounds and he does at the 35 now you're starting to flirt with field goal range once again Drew I I, I personally never saw this from Drew when I played with him but the way he the is movement. moving out of the, the movement out of the pocket eyes downfield I mean that's awesome Saxton the fifth year senior trying to orchestrate a scoring drive for the Spartans. It would be the first scoring drive from either team in this opening half from DeSanto Field. Four out, 
Lots of rush. Saxon's just going to have to hold on to that football. He got met and tackled and brought down in a hurry by Dawson Dietz. It's a name 58. Yeah. He called a lot tonight. The Drew Spartans will call their last time out. It'll be interesting. Maybe take a couple more shots on the field. But Drew does a really good job there. As soon as he starts feeling pressure and he kind of feels himself boxing in there, right, you'll see him moving. Watch how he tucks that ball up, up in there because those guys are going for that ball and they're trying to get it out. Well, Dietz grabbed him with his left hand on the back of the jersey and then he took his right hand, and you're exactly right, Steve. He punched it in there to try to knock that ball loose. 20 seconds remain. Downs are inconsequential right now. Let's take a look at the production crew bringing us all the great shots tonight. Kevin Gibson, Brian Landers, Brian Trail our box cast replays and then of course our director Mike Becker thanks to the entire production crew they do a great job all football season all basketball season got a night game our first night game of the season this year it's a beautiful northeastern Ohio night and an outstanding football game mm -hmm. Washington and Jefferson will bring six, now seven. Saxton deep right side, in out. Oh one. my gosh! Touchdown! Wow! Oh. What a catch! <laughs> Noah Coyne! Oh my goodness! Incredible concentration by Coyne there. Drew stayed in the pocket, took the hit, and delivered a dime. Look at the, as you said, concentration. This ball hits Coyne's left fingertip, which was dangled over the <laughs> left shoulder pad of the defender. He flipped it to himself, caught it, and went in for the touchdown. Oh my goodness, that was impressive. <laughs> what a good momentum swing going into halftime for the Spartans. Kick is up, and the kick is good. And with 13 seconds left to play in this opening half, lightning has struck on an otherwise beautiful blue sky night. Spartans seven, presidents nothing. We'll be back. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Steve and I catching our breath after Ooh. that last play. This crowd's coming alive now too. There's a look at the night and the dormitory space that surrounds the Santo Field. Washington and Jefferson will get it and they'll have two timeouts. And they'll down at the 19-yard line. So they've got a long way to go with 11.7 seconds left. And we'll see what they decide to do. But my guess is they take a knee knowing that they're going to get the football to start the third quarter. Yeah. And with the way their offense is playing this half, I think you kind of just have to try it out there, knee it down, head to the locker room, just kind of regroup. Spartans will set up with three down linemen. They'll drop everyone else into coverage. And there may not even be a snap. Oh, it looks like they're re-kicking. There is a there is a marker on the field on the very, very far sideline that absolutely no one saw, including both head coaches, both teams, and Steve and I. Looks like it was an offsides on the Spartans. Another penalty. So we'll do it again. You know, sometimes I wish if they were just going to come out there and take a knee, Sirianni and Debs just be like, we're good, just go into the half. I thought that's actually what happened. They had said, we're just going to take a knee, we're going to wind the clock out. Presidents get it up to the 34, and then that 
Spartan defense doing a nice job making sure special teams wise nothing ridiculous happens to end the first half. Seven seconds left on the clock. As uh, Marco once again getting down there. Playing hard on defense, special teams, everywhere. So the presidents will set up. Colton Jones under center will take the snap, drop to the knee, and he does that and winds down the clock on this first half. But for 29 minutes and 47 seconds of the 30-minute first half, it yeah. was all about defense. Yeah, I was falling asleep up here. Until one special play from Drew Saxton to his wideout, Noah Coyne, that went for a 40-plus yard touchdown. And that's where we stand as the great crowd here at DeSanto Field is excited as the Spartans head into halftime, up 7 nothing. Always have a great halftime show planned for you. We've got extensive storylines across campus, plus the marching band. Steve and I will step away for the 20-minute halftime. We'll be back just before the start of the third quarter to get you ready for the second half. It's Case Western Reserve, 7, Washington and Jefferson, nothing. fans and welcome to tonight's Spartan Marching Band Halftime Show. Tonight's Halftime Show theme, shh, it's a secret. We don't talk about it. We are all hiding something we don't want others to know. Sometimes these secrets are fine and innocent and other times they are not. Our first song tonight concerns the latter. Here is the 2005 hit by the All-American Rejects, Dirty Little Secret. The concept album by the American band Styx, Kilroy, was here. 
told the story of a world where rock music was outlawed. The opening track, Mr. Roboto, is about a mysterious android whose secret identity is revealed at the end of the song. Spoiler alert, it's Kilroy. We do not want to talk about the closer this evening, but we must ask about an estranged uncle to figure out how to save our family's enchantments as well as our magical house. We now close our secret show with the number one hit from the 2021 Disney film Encanto, We Don't Talk About Bruno.
ladies and gentlemen, the Spartan dance team. Fans, we ask that you please direct your attention to the field as we continue with Club Sports Appreciation Day at DeSanto Field. We would now like to recognize a few of our club teams for their outstanding achievements last year. First, the ice hockey team, which won the M4 College Hockey East Championship. Next, the badminton team, winners of the Durabird Eastern Collegiate Team Championship. Next, the fencing team which finished first in the men's epi at the Midwest Fencing Conference Championship with both the men's and women's teams registering individual top five finishes. And finally, the club volleyball team, which finished first in the D2 Silver Flight at Nationals in Phoenix, Arizona. And congratulations again to all of our club teams, and thank you for your stellar representation of Case Western Reserve University.
night. Great atmosphere. Nice performance at halftime by the marching band that you just saw before you took a look at Steve and I up here in the press box. It's 7-0 Case Western Reserve over the presidents of Washington and Jefferson. And, Steve, you have that first half stat sheet, and there is there is clearly some numbers that jump out. Oh, yes. Obviously, the first thing that jumps out on the Spartan side is six penalties for 38 yards. That's not the Spartan brand of football. That's not what Coach Daz wants to see. And most of those penalties were mental mistakes, and that's they have to correct that. And that, that trend won't continue. The other big thing that jumped out to me was uh, – WJ only had 61 yards of total offense for the, this explosive offense. You know, scoring 43 and a half points a game on average, only holding them to 61 yards. That's very impressive from the Spartan defense. This is a team that 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 rushes or, or totals rushing and passing over 450 yards per yeah. game. They've got 61 after one half. Yeah, and I'm no math major. Right now, they're only on pace for 120. Now, the thing, if you go to the other side of the ball and you look at what Case Western Reserve University has done, they, they got that one touchdown to Noah Coyne, 42 yards late in the first half on a spectacular play. Here's a look at it. Saxon just goes down the deep side, and look at Coyne flipped it to himself. His left hand actually and arm actually went over the – shoulder pad of the defender and flipped that ball from his fingertips back to his right hand for the touchdown. Short of that, that was the only score in the first half. But, Steve, Case Western Reserve offensively definitely had their opportunities in yes. that opening half. Yes, I mean, they moved the ball. and They had 204 yards of total offense. And as we were just talking there at halftime, they were in the red zone. They were right on the doorsteps of scoring, but they just could not finish those drives. So as we start the second half, and we're about a minute and a half away from doing that, on a just a beautiful night here at Spartan or at DeSanto Field, home of the Spartans. Washington and Jefferson will get the football first. They'll be on offense. And and I would imagine there would be a little bit of a sense of urgency, not because they need to get back into this football game, because they're only down at one score or a touchdown, and we've got an entire 30 minutes to play of football, mm -hmm. but because they maybe need to prove to themselves yes. that they can actually – move the football against yeah. the Spartan defense? They need to get going here. I mean, I'm sure they went in the locker rooms. I'm sure their coaches told them very nicely that um, the way they played in the first half was not acceptable. And they really need to get going. And that WJ defense, which up until 13 seconds left in the uh, half, was probably real high on themselves going into halftime all fired up. And that touchdown there, that probably took a lot of wind out of their sails. So these WJ really needs to come out here and set their tone if they want to compete here in this second half. And there's a spectacular look at nighttime night game at DeSanto Field here on Euclid and 115th. 115th is on the other side of those dormitories and 118th is on the other side of us in the press box. So if you come down Euclid, head north on 115 or 118 and you can watch a Division Three college football game in a beautiful setting on, a, on a, just a warm, perfect breeze, beautiful mid-September night. Truly one of the hidden gems of Northeast Ohio. So the Spartans are ready to kick it, and the presidents of Washington and Jefferson are ready to return it. Joseph Rhodes the fifth will do the honors for Case Western Reserve. Low kick, fielded with one hand at the 15, and up outside the 30 come the Presidents. Nice return that time by Washington and Jefferson, and returning the football was Tanner Patty. Pretty good field position for the Presidents. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. So here come the Presidents. They had three first downs in the opening half in the 30 minutes of football. 24 plays they ran, 61 net yards. This is an offense that can get 61 on one play, though. Little flip on the sweep, and it's 10 plus 2 for the running back, and that's Ian Hansen. Hansen, a wideout, coming off of his split, and getting the little flip. So Hansen will check out, and back in is Anthony Rosati. He split out wide to the right of his quarterback, Colton Jones. Jones to throw. Little pressure, steps up, delivers, and a great catch by guess who? Rosati. So two plays, both of them go for more than 10 yards. And just like that, Steve, Washington and Jefferson is doing what everybody knew that they could do. Yep, they're starting to find their rhythm here. Move the football. Jones 
Looking left again as a receiver. Trying to break tackles, will not. But nonetheless, picking up yards for Washington and Jefferson that time. It's See, W and J at halftime kind of really talked about it. I think they're putting an emphasis this uh, half of going lateral with that football. You know, that first play, the misdirection, the wide sweep. You know, you see Jones rolling out left, right. I mean, those aren't him. That's not him feeling pressure. That's designed that way, and that's helping that offensive line block the Spartan front better. Second and four from the 33 of the Spartans. Jones to throw, looking down the middle of the field, has someone open in the end zone, and it's deep, too deep. Too deep for anyone to catch, yep. including T.J. Traxel. Looks like he was challenging Schuster on that play, but he stuck with his guy. Beautiful ball, too, from Jones. It's a little too wide, or deep, I'm sorry. You know, great coverage that time, though. I mean, the Spartans were, were right on him, Colin Schuster. Third and manageable here for the Presidents. Probably going to look for his uh, favorite target there to find a hole in the zone. Ian Hansen now back in the game as well. Hansen and Rosati to his right. Jones with pressure and sacked. Oh. RJ Ayers, 97 with a push up the middle. Looks so like the Spartans burn five and he just happens to get off his block and come free. Well, he wrapped him up with a bear hug. Air is 6'3", 245. I'll tell you what, the presidents also, they, they're not going to let Kane Tong beat him this half. They were double teaming him. And that opens up opportunities for teammates on that defensive line like Ayers. So the Spartan defense has held. And it's a punt off the side of the foot of Washington and Jefferson. But it'll get a good bounce. And the Spartans will start with the football on their own 10-yard line. First and 90. Drew Saxon will come out with a real nice first half. Saxon was 15 of 19, 182 yards passing. He had one touchdown, and he had a 61 long pass, and that wasn't the one that scored the touchdown. Touchdown, of course, went to Connor or Noah Coyne. So Saxon will not come out. It's yeah. Ian Kipp. We wondered about him at the end of the second half with, with all that defensive push, that defensive front four by Washington and Jefferson really wrecking havoc with that case offensive line. We wondered if Kip would come in. He's a threat to run. He'll get the handoff, and it's a quarterback draw right up the middle with room, and he slides near the 20. They'll mark him at the 18. I like the play call there by Coach Stabs. Get this defense on their toes. They haven't seen a draw yet. Helps the offensive line and the pass rush. Great play. Spartans really, really, really need to focus on having sustained drive this play. Big plays are all well and good, but you need to have a sustained drive. Kip will stay in the game. Full back in the backfield with him the block. It's a second and two. We could see Sean Michael James get the football. Kip again. Needs to get to the 20, and they'll mark him at the 20. That was like fourth effort. Yeah. It wasn't first effort, second effort, third effort. Kip just kept spinning and moving and spinning and moving. He'll come off the field after a very successful two-play series for a first down. He's got some power in those legs of his. Number 10 in your shot right there, Ian Kip from Mentor, former Cardinal quarterback. Former Cardinal quarterback will coach the or quarterback the Steelers in Cleveland on Thursday night this week against the Browns. Mitchell Trubisky, and Saxon goes quick out to his right for a short pickup of two. I think there's another mentor quarterback that you're forgetting about. Coach Debs there. Coach Debs, the the OG, right? Yeah. So it paved the way for Mitchell Trubisky, some would say. You know, you got Sirianni on the other side of the field coaching Washington and Jefferson and his brother course coaches in the NFL, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Saxon with a little sidearm, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. How about that? Good <laughs> look. Nice pass. Dollum with it. That's a beautiful throw there by Drew. Look at that. Beautiful sidearm pass. Jared Timmons had to wonder how in the world <laughs> did you get that pass off? 
Back to the NFL point for a moment. The John Carroll, Coach Debs, Case Western Reserve, the coach of the San Diego Chargers, Braden. Brandon Staley. Braden, Sta Braden Staley, coach with Coach Debs. I think Tom Arce on that staff is the quarterback's coach as Orsini goes for a first down. I think so. Tom Arth, of, co of course, was coached by Coach Debs. That's John Carroll. Here's another connection for you. One of their coaching interns is uh, Anto Antonio Orsini's older brother, Giuseppe, who uh, played receiver when I was at Case. He yeah, the, the, the way that it works in the, in the football families and in the, in the, in the coaching weaves, the threads that connect everybody is, is really neat to explore and to find out how, how it all fits. First and 10, Saxton will hand it off again to Orsini and Antonio will push the pile up to the 37 yard line. He'll pick up three. Orsini in that first half on the ground, the Spartans, well, they struggled. That, as we've talked about, that defensive line for Washington and Jefferson is fantastic. Orsini carried it five times for 18 yards. Deusler, their other back, four carries for seven yards. Kip kept it once as a quarterback for three yards, and Saxon in his scramble picked up 14 yards. So they've got barely 40 yards in rushing heading into the second half. Deusler now in the game on the left hip of his quarterback, Saxton. He'll set and block. And boy, that's a oh. pass that needs to be caught by a fairly sure-handed Riley Nurick. Nurick never drops the football, but he did on that one. Nurick, the junior out of North Royalton. A bear, All right? North a bear. Bears. Andrew Rossman, my partner along with you, Steve, <laughs> is a North Royalton bear. Steve, a Berea Mid Park. What are they, the Titans? They were the Titans now. Yeah. Yep. Former Berea Brave Mid Park Meteor, now Berea Mid Park Titans. Blitz coming. Saxon going to need to get rid of it quickly. He's going to roll out of the pocket, throw across his body at the 50 yard line. And there was almost a collision to write home about. I think, oh. and I think it's coin, we'll see in the replay. I think he heard some footsteps. He yeah. pulled away from the ball at the last second. Drew really tried to thread the needle on that one. Yeah, it was coined. Coming in to lay the lumber was Joey Caroli. I think Coin can catch that football. I think he can too, yeah, but I think he made, he made a business yeah. decision on that one. <laughs> a business decision. <laughs> Spartans will punt. Fourth and seven from the 37. Rhodes' punt is off. That's a hold. And it's a fair catch at the 34-yard line. And there is a penalty, two penalty flags. Spartan's going to have to punt it again. Spartan up back um, might have tackled one of the W&J rushers. So it's a tackle not sustaining your block. Or yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm never going to say it was a hold, but if there was a hold, I would say that was probably it. It is a hold, and I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't catch a number on who was. How, well, I'm not sure how it was. Ex oh, they're going to mark 10 yards off of the where the ball was caught. What? So instead of a punt, they're going to give them 10 yards from the 35 to the 45. I don't know yeah. that I've seen that. I don't think so. I have not seen it. That's definitely uh, very favorable. Well, that Spartan defense going to have to play well again. Handoff to Huss. Trying to get outside. He does, but he's run out of bounds after gaining two, maybe three yards, and he's run out of bounds for the Spartans by Marco Toth. Toth, another mentor high school cardinal. Second and seven. Another outside zone play, lateral play for W and J. I just think they're really afraid of this Spartan interior. Spartan showing an edge rusher, coming. Little sidearm shot. One deserves another. Complete pass at the midfield mark. 
Spartan defense really extending that play out, doing a nice job, not letting anyone get behind them. Alex Glatz with a, re with a nice tackle. Yeah, really everyone closes in there, continues, swarms the ball, great defensive play. Third and five at midfield. Spartan show blitz, now they back out of it. Left flat, oh. immediately hit. Boy, Huff caught it, but he was immediately tackled by a guess who? Marco, Marco Toth. That is a textbook open field tackle there by Toth. The closing speed that the Spartan defense has shown in this game, Steve, is noticeable, I think. Yes, th this is a quick defensive unit, and they are flying around, getting to the ball, and hitting the guy hard. And I know Coach Miller is down there, and he's real happy about that, the former linebacker. Warren Miller, the defensive coordinator of this Spartan football team. Good pressure on that punter. This is Dahlem. He will not get a chance at it. And it'll be down at the 12-yard line. Boy, dangerously close that time to that punt, though. Let's see if I can get his number as he comes off the field. It looks like it was 23. You know, a lot of times in punt coverage, when you're going down there, you, you don't know where the ball's yes. at. Yep. And, I mean, that almost hit him. And it would have been <laughs> first and 10 from the 12 for Washington and Jefferson. Yeah, those short routes can really get you there, and especially – and when they go look at that in film, I guess he's not. his excuse can't be, uh, well, the punt was short. But it, it would be the excuse. It would be. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, guarantee it would be the, the right answer, but not, you know, you're still going to have to. It's a tough thing. Saxton under center. Actually, he's in the shotgun. Going to give it to Deusler. Gage, not a lot. Holding call is going to bring this one back. It's going to be half the distance. They'll back the ball up to the six-yard line. Oh, boy. You know, I would like to give out on all these punts that WJ has been forcing or have been forced to take. Marco Toth and Nate Sakalo are getting after it on the rushing. I wouldn't be surprised if they get in there and block one of them before games end. So as they're going to mark off that holding call, Alex Fromberg will now come in to play quarterback for the Spartans. Fromberg, a junior, 6'1", 200 pounds out of Bridgewater, New Jersey, Raritan High School. He's thrown it twice this year, two for two for 39 yards. He's run it nine times for 40 yards. So he's a threat to do both. Sean Michael James in the backfield set to help block for his quarterback. Quick hit, left flat. Good recovery. Spartans have the football in the 10 thanks to Riley Nurick. And Drew comes back in. Got Saxton, number three, walks into your shot. I think it's real common on Drew's leadership and maturity that he, you know, four-year starter, comes back, all this stuff, all these accolades, and he's willing to share time with these other quarterbacks to, one, help develop them for future years, and, two, because that's what's going to help the team the most. I mean, for a guy of Drew's stature to be willing and so active and such a good leader in this regard really comments on the kind of guy he is. Second and 10. They need 11, actually. Dusler with the handoff over the 10, and he's immediately dropped by Tanner Volpatti. Gage will pick up three. It'll be third and long. See what Coach Dabbs probably going to see a nice little out route around here. Something short to the sticks and turn around. Play clock's at 15 seconds. Spartan's still figuring it out. Actually, I might be wrong. He's keeping two in the backfield, so he's either running or he might be trying to go deep here. Play clock at two. Saxon with pressure. Steps up, throws it over the middle. Caught! Dollum at the 40. Beautiful ball and beautiful catch. Ethan Dollum, the sophomore. Out of Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Coming over the middle where hard hits await. Oh, yeah. And just 
picked it out of the sky. Looks like the Spartans are going to use tempo here, take advantage of the big play, catch what? W and J on their heels. What a pass. Oh, yes. That had everything in it. Tight spiral. Got there in a hurry. Perfect. Dusler immediately met. They just, I mean, Gage did, did well to gain two after he got hit. It's going to be a loss of two, but it looked like a loss of four, maybe five, when he took the handoff. Oh, yeah, the WJ linebacker came flying through the line there. So let me ask you this. As a former right tackle, offensive lineman with it obviously you know is very in tune to what's going on down there on that line if you're having trouble running the football which the Spartans are how can you fix that in game I think you should go more screen plays more quarterback draws you, you know a balanced attack helps keep the defense on their toes right if you're a one-dimensional triple option like these defensive guys they'll get in different stance and they'll rush different ways and they'll fire off the ball different ways you see right there blamer a cut on the back side that's a great way to get your guy thinking, you know, twice before he starts firing up the ball. There's a lot of a lot of mental games down there. You know, defense linemen always tell you they look at the offense lineman's knuckles. You know, if they see white knuckles, they're thinking run. If it's off, they're thinking pass just because of where your weight is. There's offensive linemen. But the offensive linemen, we played just as many games with these guys, but more than they really even know. I mean, you cut a guy. You kind of chip a guy. You let a guy go. You push him whichever direction. They start changing the rush, and they start thinking – they start getting too smart for their own good, per se, is for lack of a better term there. And they think they know what's going on. So it's third and nine after that four-yard gain by Deusler. President's showing they're going to rush five. He'll kick two back. Saxton with time. Now he doesn't have it. Pass out to the 50. It's caught by Dollum. And it's near first down. They're going to mark him at the 49. Oh. Actually, that pass was not caught by Dollum. It was caught by Michael Wykowski. 19 looked like 15 to me. They'll mark it at the 49, almost the 49. It's going to be a fourth and a very long two. I'm surprised if they go for it. They will not. They'll send Rhodes out the punter because if Rhodes gets a good punt off, that puts Washington and Jefferson. This is a Jim Tressel yes. coaching <laughs> move right here. Yep. It's about field position. If you could get a good punt off, pin your opponent deep in their own end inside the 20 and then play defense like you have, you're going to get the football back in better field position. Exactly. Coach Depp's showing extreme faith in his defense here. Rhodes to punt. Gets a clean punt off. It's a short punt. Fielded at the 20 on the run, and the Spartans did not get what they hoped for. That short punt fielded on the run led to an 11-yard punt return, and Washington and Jefferson will have the ball at the 32. It almost looked like he kind of kicked it the wrong direction. So the Spartan coverage team was kind of heading down middle to – left and he kind of kicked that ball to the right there so it's like an 18 yard punt net Spartans were hoping for more like a 30 yard yeah. punt net inside two minutes left to play in this third quarter Colton Jones Deep down, left side field. Got a guy at the 40 up to catch it. Did he get it? Nope. They'll say he's out of bounds. Beautiful coverage there. I mean, that's a tight spot for Jones to try to fit that one in there, and he almost had it, but the Spartan defender, I didn't get a number on, knocks that ball out there right at the last second. Oh, the veteran Schuster. Yep, Colin Schuster. So, uh, so odd calling him the veteran. I remember him when he was 18 years old and a green freshman. He's a graduate student this year. Second and long. Again to throw. This one op oh. open and out of the hands with a lot of room to run. Oh, my. See, these are the little. John Paduzzi. These are the little things when your offense isn't flowing and you're not used to getting all the, you're, you're not getting all the yards you're used to, you're scoring all the points that you're used to. Sometimes you try to do too much and then you can't do the simple things correctly, like catch a ball. That was wide open. I'm telling you, John could have been on his way to a 68-yard touchdown. He had a lot of green in front of him, and he was in full gallop. Third and long. Pressure steps up. Pass is deflected. There's a name we haven't heard yet, Mark Latos. This is the best defensive effort that I've seen the Spartans play in, in a while. I'm going to get a lot of backlash for this, but I think this is the best defensive game I've seen in my entire history of watching cage football, including the times I was playing. 
these guys, I mean, they're motors. I mean, you can see Kane Toth. He's in these guys' heads here. He's getting after him. That guy's motor is unreal. I every time, uh, every time WJ has the ball, I just buy my eyes fixated on number ten because of the way he plays. Punt uncontested. Dollum chasing it back to the twenty-three, and that's where they'll mark it. The punter for Washington and Jefferson, Devin Wyatt has been their weapon. Oh yeah, he's, he's been outstanding. He really has not given Case good field position. Even when he as a punter has been in position to, you know, you'd think, well, he's really got to boom one. Yeah. And he booms one. He's uh, It's a good weapon to have when your offense isn't firing on cylinders. I'm sure he's punted more times this quarter than he has all season. Devin Wyatt. So here come the Spartans. And it will be Saxton, a back at quarterback. You mentioned some of those career records that Drew is close to. He's already the program's all-time leader in career completions with 747. He passed Dan, Malin, Dan Whalen's mark of 742. And Coach Deb's looking out at his graduate student quarterback and wants to talk it over. Some other things about Saxton. He's in striking distance of two other program records coming into this game. He has 9,314 career passing yards, so he's 410 away from the all-time mark by Whalen. Hmm. 9,724. He won't get the 410 tonight unless it's a second half of extreme proportions, but he certainly will get it this football season. And then his 83 career passing touchdowns are four away from Whalen's mark of 87. So. Before the end of this season, your yeah. former teammate, the guy who you blocked for and call good friend, saw you guys talking to each other pregame today, could be the all-time record holder in nearly every quarterback category in the history of Case Western Reserve University football. And like you said, has enough teammate in him to take the new approach by the coaching staff of working other quarterbacks in this year. Just an all-around great guy really honored to call Drew a friend, and I also will be staking a claim to some of those records, at least a quarter of them. You should. Drew to throw, looking, nobody open, over the middle, breaking free, almost catching oh. it with a diving try. <laughs> oh. I think it was Michael Wykowski. I think the W&J corner there got away with a little bit of a hold. He kind of went out, he was getting away, well, Je Woj was getting away from him, and he stuck his hand out there, just grabbed enough to slow him down out of stride. I think the Spartans see something, Steve, that they want to take advantage of in a deep yeah. ball. I think that's what's been working for him so far. You know, so keeping more guys, keeping a running back in. I think they might they even have a tight end out there right now, which is very rare occurrence in the Spartan offense. So you just max for attack, keep Drew in there, and let him just sling it around. Hand off right up the middle. Going to get back to the line of scrimmage at the 23. That was Deusler. Gage Deusler out of Avon Lake, former Shoreman, on the defensive side of the football for the Spartans. His former teammate, Nate Sakalo, plays strong safety, starts at strong safety. And then on special teams, on point after touchdowns, his former teammate at Avon Lake High School, Michael Stewie, is the holder. So three former Shoremen playing a lot of football as just sophomores here at Case Western Reserve talked about Menor. We've talked about North Royalton. We'll throw Avon Lake into that mix. But all of Northeast Ohio high school football. Saxon to throw. Second and long. Flushed from the pocket over the middle. Almost picked on a tip. Riley Nurk was the intended receiver and it was good coverage that time by that president's defense. It was all over him on that one. So that was third and long, not second and long, as I had said. So that sets up the fourth down punting situation now. So the defenses are both holding. Mm -hmm. They are both taking care of business. And offense is waiting for one spark, like the Spartans had at the end of the half, a 42-yard touchdown play on a circus catch by Noah Coyne. This Rhodes to punt it. They're sending everybody. Here comes the rush. And it barely gets off. That was nearly blocked. How that ball was not blocked. I'd love to see the replay on that one. Yeah. 
Washington and Jefferson will have it at the 44, and here's the replay. Joseph Rhodes, the fifth, going to get some company in a second. Oh, there were two players that had a legit shot at pounding that football back to the turf here at DeSanto Field. 27.4 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Spartans on a 42-yard touchdown pass just before the end of the first half. Lead 7-0. Washington and Jefferson 2-0 on the season. Spartans 1-1. Colton Jones going to hand it off. It's Justin Huss. Huss tries the left side. He's met, and he's driven back. Boy, they're going to mark him forward progress for two yards. I think that's doing them a favor. Yeah, that, that's pretty generous there by that line judge. If you would have told me W and J would be starting their average drive start would be around the, their own forty yard line, I'd say, oh, they're going to smoke the Spartans. But obviously, case defense here. Oh, oh, Jones with a great fake, little pooch pass. There's no, there's absolutely no there, one. Yeah, there. there's not even a Washington and Jefferson. There, here's the here's the marker. <laughs> there wasn't even a Washington and Jefferson player on that side of the football field. There were four Spartans. Yeah, the nearest guy was at the hash. I'm not sure why this line judge was the one with the most common sense to throw the flag. Well, he probably had an earful from Coach Debelak or <laughs> defensive coordinator Coach Warren Miller saying, listen, there's nobody over there. Are they going to pick it up and wave it off? There are. They're going to oh, wave it off. That, that's, that's a bad football call That's right really there. bad there. I mean, there was uh, – we're not exaggerating. There was no one on that side of the football field. If you cut the field in half and you took that outside half, there was not a Washington and Jefferson football player. I'm not sure the justification on that one. And Coach Miller obviously is not agreeing with that justification either. So, <laughs> so here we go. 15 minutes left in this one. We're going to take a timeout. We're headed to the fourth quarter. Case Western Reserve 7, Washington. Actually, let's keep it here because Washington and Jeff is coming back on the field. They want to keep that pace moving in their favor. It's seven nothing as we head into the final 15 minutes, and there's that that large collection of Case Western Reserve University Spartan cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most cheerleaders I've ever seen. I think you have a full offense and defensive unit oh, down there team. almost. I think you got like 21 players or 21 cheerleaders. One, so you're right. Yeah, you're one, one shy <laughs> short of 11 on both sides of the football. I'll go grab my sister out of the dorms. She can come down and help them out. Steve, what's your sister studying at Case Western Reserve? She's a nursing student. Um, Great nursing school. Yep, she's a junior. She's actually working tonight down at Southwest General. Doing a little uh, night shift. Well, hopefully it's a light curriculum. night for her. Hopefully. Steve Bocci, my partner here in the booth, 2019 graduate of the Civil Engineering Program at Case Western Reserve. This is Colton Jones on a third and long. Rush is coming. Colton's going to oh step up. Goodness. He's got room to run. No! Boy, he had a lot of opening, but someone, I think it initially was AJ or RJ Ayers, and then Sean Torres cleaned it up. Let's take a look. Watch the top of your screen, too. You'll see Caden Tong get held ridiculously directly in front of the head official. There comes Tong. There's Ayers right there. He grabs him on the shirt, and then Torres is there to clean him up. Beautiful. That's teamwork. Spartans hold again. This defense is very, extremely impressive tonight. And I was worried now that you get in a close game fourth quarter, you got to really rely on your veteran leadership there. But this defense is not missing a beat. A deep punt again. Dahlem will. Oh, he lost the football. Oh, no. oh Ethan Dahlem fumbled the football, and the Washington and Jefferson presidents have recovered. That may have been the break they needed. Hit him right in the chest pad. It went right through his hands, hit him right in the oh. chest pad. One of the, in my opinion, one of the hardest jobs out there on the football field is to be a punt returner. To have the concentration to sit there, catch the ball when you got all these guys running down full speed at you, you couldn't pay me enough to do that. All right, triple check time here. First and 10 for the presidents following the Fumbled punt at the 18. Jones hands it off and stuffed. There we go. Tackled for a loss. Torres again. Sean Beautiful Torres, the play. junior out of Naperville, Illinois. There's Tong wrapping him up. 
Torres getting down low. Absolutely blows Tyler Gar Carnegie off the ball and just wrecks that play. Well, you're playing with confidence right now if you're on that defensive side oh, of yeah. the football. And that little extra surge really really makes a difference as a player, doesn't yes, it? Yes, especially when you're at the point of the attack because that was an outside zone play. That tackle, 55 from W&J, he's got to set that edge. And if he can't set that edge and he's getting blown into the backfield, the whole play blows up. So it's a loss of four. Second down and 14. Jones to throw it, looking right end zone. Pass at the 10, it's caught. And run out of bounds at the 10. That pass was complete to John Paduzzi. Third and manageable from the 10-yard line. And it's a two-down Oh, for series. sure, for sure. But now that offense doesn't have as much field to work with. You know, they're getting condensed. Even a lot, a lot of these electric offenses, when you get down in that red zone, the field kind of condenses a little bit. They struggle regardless. But now when you're struggling as an entire game and you get the Spartan defense coming after you, let's see what happens here. Jones going to throw. Here comes that press into the end zone. Up, down. Did he catch it? Incomplete nope. pass. He threw that in the triple coverage. That was Rosati, his favorite receiver, the sure-handed one, but that would have been a miracle catch. Gets decent protection here from his offensive line. You throw it back there, you got three guys closing in on that ball. Toe thread on him, Schuster, and looks like uh, DJ Wolf right on him. So fourth down. Fourth and they'll say two, but boy, the, the scoreboard says two, but the down markers look like it's four. They need to get to the eight-yard line. The ball will be snapped at the 11, so we'll count it for three. There's a first down, maybe a touchdown, touchdown. and it is. Touchdown pass to John Paduzzi. And that fumble on that punt return has not turned out well for the Spartans. Schuster playing off. Looks like he just kind of miscalculated there on the open field tackle. Spins right out of it. Interesting to see the Spartans' defensive backs give him so much room there. Devin Wyant set to add the point after touchdown. This will tie the game, and it does. So with 12 minutes, 39 seconds left to play in the football game, we're wrapped at 7. We'll be back. Have you heard the news that Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards? Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Along with you, along with my partner, Steve Bocci. Steve, how do you respond as a Spartan football team after you have a, an unforced error, you know, just a plain out fumble on a, on, a, on a punt return that turns into a touchdown in a game that you have controlled? Yes. Um, and now suddenly it's, it's brand new all again. This defense has been carrying this offense throughout this game. Offense really needs to tighten up the shoulder pads, put their helmets on, and kind of get to it. Do what they do best. Get out there, lean on Drew, your veteran leader, and have him give you a sustained drive. They'll have the opportunity on the return. It's up across the 20, near the oh, 30. All the More broken tackles all the way down to the 34. No flags on the field. And Gage Dusler, number two. Caught it at the five, he got it up to the 34, so it's a 29-yard kickoff return, and it gives the Spartans reasonable field position. It's Deusler, the sophomore out of Avon Lake. Looks like Ian Kipp's gonna come in at quarterback for a little change of pace. Kipp number 10, indeed in the shotgun. Sean Michael James, the fullback behind him. James usually motions out of that and lines up in a slot ready to help block for his quarterback. Kip last time he was in two plays first down for the Spartans. Bad snap. Gonna take it anyways. Up the middle on a draw over the 45. Over the 40 to the near 45. Well Kip was one broken tackle away from really taking off. Yeah. He's hurt. 
he is really hurt. I'll tell you what, those WJ boys, they're flying in there, taking their shots. Well, let's hope this is not serious. He could not stay on his legs. He was like a baby, a fawn, just born, trying to walk for the first time. He's coming off under his own, own strength. That's a good sign. Boy, he's exciting. He is. He's got a lot of power. I mean, just looking at the guy, I mean, he doesn't look like a big, powerful guy, but, I mean, he gets the ball. He'll run at guys almost like, you know, Jacob Burke style. He'll hit him and carry him and bounce off him and keep going. He looks like his legs are all right. I don't know if, there, if he got hit and he was just wobbly. Taking a look yeah. at his <laughs> eyes right now. Saxon's back in the game. It's a first and 10 for the Spartans. They're now at their own 45. Game's tied at seven. Drew with the quarterback draw. Goes right side. There's a hold in the backfield, though. This one's coming back. Oh, they're going to call that a hold. <laughs> Boy, just when you get a little mo. I have some footage of Caden Tong to show them. So you go from first and 10 to first and 20. It's got to be a mental hit. Right to that offensive line and the and the and the quarterback that just got ten yards on a gain. It definitely it changes your plays that you're going to call, but you have to have confidence. You you have confidence in your offense line and Drew and the receivers. Where first and twenty, first and fifty, it doesn't matter. We're going to get that first down. They're still talking to Kip at the trainer's table. This is Orsini straight up the middle, crosses the forty, and the senior brought down at the forty-two. He'll get seven of the ten back. They're really starting to gash in the middle of this W and J defense. Oh, looks like we got a trying to stay with tempo, but the officials are not allowing the play to happen. So now they've stepped in, they've marked the football. Spartans are ready to go. Blamer, Kelly, Merritt, Thibner, Bruno along that offensive line. Deucler in the backfield. He'll block. Saxon's got to get rid of it. He does. At the 50, it's caught. There you go. It's going to be a pickup of seven. Quick out to Isaiah Arrington. Now you got about third down and five, which is very manageable. You're right back on pace. That's a tough throw to make. Oh, yeah, all the way across all the field. All the way across the field like that guys. after looking opposite with, like you said, corners coming up ready to pick it. Yeah. It's got to be a quick pass, meaning strength. Got to have a lot of, a lot of astro burners behind it. <laughs> Third and five at midfield. Orsini's back in the backfield. Saxton, the quarterback, with pressure. They'll rush him tight over the middle. Open, Arrington. Oh. Lost the football. Isaiah had it. Got to pull that in, young man. In and out of the hands. Had his guy beat. That is the second time on a third down situation that Saxton has put it on the money over the middle, but the wideout has just been un unable to bring it in. Spartans a punt. Can't ask for a much better ball if you're the receiver there. You gotta have, be able to haul that one in. Let's hope for this punt can punt him, or, uh, pin him back in there. Rhodes barely gets it off again. Fair catch caught at the 12. That one juggled a little bit. Yeah, I thought we were going to get a nice, uh, they're going to return the favor there Chris for Chris Church Jr., that would have been real nice of Chris to do. Does not happen, though. Ten minutes, two seconds left. Game's tied at seven. Crowd, great crowd tonight at DeSanto Field. These bleachers are pretty much full. And they're into it. Yeah. That's one thing I have a lot of respect for WMJ is they travel really well and their crowd they're loud they're proud and you know they'll cheer their football team on and they'll let you know when they're not a fan of stuff you, a fan of something you do on the field so good look by our director Mike Becker of those stands on the western side of this football field the Santo field Colton Jones gonna hand it off to 20 that's Justin Huss Huss with some room across the 15 hit hard at the 20 but he's gonna pick up They'll mark him at the 21. That's an eight-yard gain. That has to be the largest run yeah. from scrimmage, I think, on the night. I think I was just thinking that. I was just thinking the same thing. Once again, just you know, simple uh, pick and pull po outside power play. Last week, this offense, 268 yards rushing. 
Pass over the middle. It's caught at the 25 by Rosati. Rosati brought down by Schuster at the 27. It's enough for a first down. Chains will move. See, this is dangerous. It looks like W&J and J's offense got their confidence back after that touchdown. Looks like a wild. No, that's still the Jones fakes the handoff, rolls right. Quick pass, open receiver at the 40. Caught and brought in by the touchdown catcher, Paduzzi. Suddenly, yeah. This Washington and Jefferson offense has found its way. Ball down, snap is back. Quick out, Paduzzi again. He's going to get six. Yeah, you can tell they're playing cocky now. Score, get your offense rolling. I mean, that's rhythm is so important to an offense. And the fact that these guys have it now, and now the Spartan defense, they've been playing their butts off all game, and now it looks like they're. Hopefully it's a bend, not break situation for Well, them. they need a sack or a holding call just to put a little bubble in this flow right now. Jones to throw. No pressure. He's got time. He's going to roll. He'll throw it to Paduzzi. Did he hold on? He was hit hard at the 44 of Case, and they say he did. They'll mark him at the 45. Pretty good sideline catch there, it looks like. Spartans barely able to make substitutions. This president's office moving so quickly. Down the field, almost picked off. Stepping in and almost picking off that pass that time for the Spartans was DJ Wolf. He read that play excellent, flew in there. That clo Their closing speed tonight is some of the best I've seen in quite a while. Wolf the senior out of Mentor. Another Mentor <laughs> guy. Just them. get Steve Trevisano when he was the coach there, and they just say, send us all your players? Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad deal. It's been a Cardinal football program. Coach Trevisano's retired now, but boy, what a program he built. This is Huff trying to find an opening. He does. He does. Huff's on his way to a touchdown. Huff's at the 20, one man to beat. Will he get there? Tripped up at the three. Who ran him down there? Look at the patience here by Huff. Sits, 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 Cuts. sees the seam. That's exactly how those outside zone plays should be uh, executed there. It was Nathan Sakalo that ran him down. Excellent effort by Sakalo to get him. That's a, I mean, literally a touchdown saving effort. First and goal from the two. Presidents with the football. They have dominated this fourth quarter. Defensive front by the Spartans doing a nice job. It's really critical here for the Spartans to hold them to a field goal. Or even better, force a fumble, interception. I think they'll take about just about anything to get off the field without too many points being put up. Justin Huss will line up next to his quarterback, Colton Jones. The two juniors in the backfield for the Presidents. They've got two receivers in this set on second and goal from the three. Huss going to try to get in all by himself. Gets to the two, and he gets tackled there at the two. R.J. Ayers and, boy, name them all. Great defensive stop there. Sets third up a down. third and goal, just like it was last time. Yeah. We'll see if they can hold him. Actually, back. we'll take it one deeper. It was fourth and goal last time. Oh, yeah, you're right. You are. Yep. I think they're in four down territory still. High snap. Jones sacked at the 10. Marco Toth. Great blitz. No one picks him up and just a free shot on the quarterback. Here comes the place kicker. Devin Wyatt, one of one on the year. 28-yarder is the one he made. 
He needs a 27-yarder to put the Presidents up. Hold is down, kick is up, and it looks good. And it is good. Ooh. With five minutes and 25 seconds left, Washington and Jefferson has taken the lead for the first time all night. They lead 10-7. We'll be back. Have you heard the news that Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards? Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Five minutes, 25 seconds left. Spartans know what they need to do with the football, and that is march down the field. They've got plenty of time. They've got two timeouts. They've got a fifth-year graduate student at quarterback that is smart as anybody on the field, football IQ. So they are set. They just need to execute. This is Deusler. He'll return it from the 7. Gage up the middle to the 25, and he gets near the 30 before he's brought down with the football. He is just one tackle away from breaking it every he time. He is. It, it really, all these returns he's had, it, it just seems like one more spin move, one guy just misses him a little bit more, he's gone. And the way these WJ defenders are closing on their kickoff coverage, I mean... They are flying down there. So Saxton, the graduate quarterback, will come out. We'll see if we see Ian Kipp again in this series. Kipp has been successful in his times in at quarterback, particularly running with the football. Four receivers in the set. Saxton to pass it. Pressure breaks down. Drew's going to have to run with it. Rolling, looking to throw. Going to run out of bounds. Going to throw it out of bounds. Ooh. Not take the loss. They're going to mark him, though, as a runner. They're going to mark him down, I think, at the 27-yard line. That's going to be a three-yard loss. Really? Looks that way. Nope, they're going to bring nope. it up to the 30. The side judge originally stood at the 27, which is where Drew ran out as he was throwing the football. That would uh, be a very uh, questionable call. Four receivers again in the set. Spartans down three, approaching five minutes left. Neutral zone infraction. Offsides, free play. Drew going deep down the field, down the middle, open oh. receiver, in and out. Oh, in and out of the hands. Oh, that was six. That was at least a big play. I think that was Wykowski. That was, he just couldn't. Wow. Oh, geez, oh, man. How many times tonight have the Spartans had opportunities for big plays that were right there? I mean, just did not happen. Drew is putting it right, right on these guys' hands, right into the bread basket. Well, they get five yards on the offsides. It's second and five. Ball's now at the 35. Orsini, fake handoff. Little bubble screen this way. Coin with it at the 40, up to the 41 and a half. It's going to be enough for a first down. Just move the chains, baby. Keep moving them. In a perfect world. In Coach Devs' perfect world, this drive takes five minutes and ends with a touchdown. Wouldn't that be nice? Riley Nurick, now in the game, lining up left of his quarterback. Keep an eye on number 22. Tight set, four receivers, but they're all bunched inside the hash marks nearly, certainly inside the numbers. This is Orsini, set the block for his quarterback, Saxton. Drew to throw with pressure. He's got to step up. Will, throw it deep, over the middle. Receiver open. open. Caught. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Spartans. Guess who? Ethan Dollum. Oh. Wow, I feel great for Ethan Dollum. That's awesome. Great play. Like you said, one break away. I mean, just watch the replay here. Drew in the face, pressure. Once again, a beautiful ball. Calls it in. 
Run, Ethan, run. <laughs> oh. I can't feel better for a young man than I do for Ethan no, Dollum right that now. That is awesome. Having himself a night here. All important point after touchdown. This makes it a touchdown that Washington Jefferson would have to have if it's good and it is. To take care of it. Nice job by Ben Barney. Ben Barney, the kicker, snapper, Cooper Imrim, and the holder, Michael Stewie. That one puts the Spartans up. 14-10. They have answered with 421 left to play in the football game. If you look at this Spartan sideline right now, it's electric. They're all, offense is all up. They're all yelling. They're all happy. And that's got to motivate that defense to come back out here and get back to where they were in that first half and third quarter. How do you like me now? <laughs> Boy, look at the beautiful setting. I mean, just wonderful shots tonight from our crew that really are highlighting the the absolutely beautiful setting here at DeSanto Field. All right, a lot of football left, 421. Three timeouts left for Washington and Jefferson, and they have found their mojo here in the fourth quarter. Kickoff is deep. Wow. And it's into the end zone. Let's take a look at that crew that has been bringing us those great shots all night, Kevin Gibson. Works the basketball games as well. There's Brian Landers, Brian Trail on our BoxCast video replay, and then the steady one behind the scenes, our director, Mike Becker. Steady is what the defense needs to be right now. Just don't try to do anything special. Just do what you've done all night long, and that has been play outstanding football. Jones with the snap. Fake handoff, he's going to throw. He's going to be pressured. He's going to tuck it and run it, and he's got room on that right side. He's run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Good pressure from the Spartan defense. You can tell this W&J off its line is starting to get more and more stout. They're max protecting. They're keeping that running back in. With only really rushing three or four guys each time. A.J. Dadowski, R.J. Ayers, Caden Tong right there, that front three. What a night they've had. See if they can do it for four more minutes. Spartans will rush four. Quick drop, quick throw. A little deep. Third and five. Is it a two down, two down possession here? I think so. I mean, you got the, the whole game on these next two plays here. Crowd starting to get into it. Marco Toth coming up to the line of scrimmage. He'd like to make a play here to seal it for the Spartans. Jones will take the snap at his own 25. Needs to get to the 35. With pressure, deep ball, open receiver. Caught. Oh, dropped. Caught and dropped. That was Peduzzi. <laughs> and guess who? That's Marco Toth. <laughs> He's all over the field tonight. Rushing to the quarterback, breaking up passes. Dropping back 30 yards into coverage. <laughs> Jones gets his ball off. He's under pressure. He's Beautiful got everyone pass. down in front of him. Everything's right there. I think Toth got a hand on it. I think he got his right hand on that football. He is flying around tonight. Here it is. Could be the ball game right here. Fourth and five. Jones to throw. Three-man rush over the middle. First down, Rosati. The sure-handed receiver out of the slot for Colton Jones. No surprise who's, who the ball is going to on that play. Quick move, 328 and counting. Jones to work again, to pass again. Deep over the middle, caught. Rosati oh. smoked at the 45, but he held on to the football. That was Sakalo, the former linebacker as a freshman that absolutely upended him. But give Rosati credit, he held on to that football. That's an impressive catch and hold there. There's movement on that line. Spartans screaming, wanting a flag, and they get it.
Cowbells are being heard. Oh yeah, this this crowd is into it tonight. You can hear the nails being bitten too. The nail biters <laughs> are out. It's a nail biter night. Just two great programs going at it. Approaching three minutes. Jones, pump fake, another fake. Good coverage, still good coverage. Gonna throw it out to a wide open halfback. That's Justin Huss. Gets across the 40 up to the 39. He'll be two yards short of a first down. Boy, I, I mean, what more could Case do? I don't know. They're they had great coverage, good pressure. Huss just slipped out of – credit Huss. Yeah. He just slipped out of the backfield and said, hey, here I am. Headsy play by Huss. Jones pump fake again. Gets a short pass to Rosati. Needed two. He gets four. They'll move the chains. At what point – Steve, do you send the kitchen? I think Coach Miller's going to start sending him here. Oh, he's only sending three sending here. three. Jones with time, looking to pick it apart. Floater over the middle. Oh. Tipped and almost picked. That was your, your friend Colin Schuster. Colin looking like he's cramping up. There's an old man out there. He's got a, that's a lot of running for him. All right, everybody take a deep breath. Schuster got a tip on it. Trying to go back to the touchdown guy, Paduzzi. He'll stay split out wide to the right. Three receivers, bottom of the screen. That's where Colt looks. Little screen over the middle. Huss with it with blockers in front. Huss at the 20, looking for a break to the 10. Down inside the 10, all the way to the 7. That was set up perfectly, and those offensive linemen laid out some blocks. Oh, yeah, they paved the road there. Spartans trying to get players off the field. Trying to set their defense. Colton Jones going to run it. Sacked. Sacked. Tied up at the 12. Tied up there by A.J. Dadowski. Along with Caden Tong. A lot of extra whistles there. Clock's at 2.06. It stopped. Why'd the clock yeah, stop? Yeah, that's whatever happened to home field. Ball's down. Bad snap. Jones. Woo. Eagle eye Colton Jones dove on it. He was in the shotgun. Yeah. Not expecting the ball to come. Look at the replay here. He just hits it right off his leg. He hits it right off his leg. You that almost turned into a nightmare for Washington and Jefferson. This pace looks like it's starting to get to them. Jones going right side. Out. It's caught, but he's well out of bounds. It's a great catch by Paduzzi. Try to go to that right corner again. They like that right corner. They like Paduzzi on that side of the field. There's that screen that set it all up. Two wicked blocks by the downfield oh, yeah. offensive lineman. Fourth down. Fourth and 10. 93 seconds left in this football game. It's a huge play here for the Spartan defense. Fourth and goal, actually, at the 14. Presidents need to get it into the end zone. Huss in the backfield. Jones is going to throw it. Pressure. Jones. And the ball's incomplete. Not even that catch. is a good non-call. There was contact in the end zone, but the ball was uncatchable. Yeah. It almost looked like he was expecting his receiver to break back yep. in towards the goalpost. Him and Paduzzi tried to hook up again. Spartan fans excited about it. Here's a good look. Paduzzi breaks out to the corner pylon. Ball's inside of him. And there's just no chance, no opportunity. So the Spartans, with a minute 29 left, have got to take care of the football. Now. Yes. Coach Jeff's in that hole right now, and he is preaching ball security, and they need to get a first down. And Washington and Jefferson has three timeouts left. Yes. So they can very quickly get the football back with less than 30 seconds going off this clock. The Spartan offense line needs to man up here and put the game on the bed. Saxton to take the snap. It's a low snap. Dusler with the handoff. Trying to strip that ball. You see those Washington and Jefferson defenders trying to. That was Orsini with the football. They're going to be starting their lawnmowers this whole series. So that play took like four seconds. And that was a timeout, a successful timeout by Washington and Jefferson. 
So let's say if, if they go three and out and each play is four or five seconds, that's only 15 seconds off the clock. Yeah. They get the ball back with no timeouts, but with a minute five, minute ten left to play. So this one is a long way from being over. That also involves having a successful punt operation when we know all we all know all know what all know too well that uh, punting the ball is not as easy as it sounds. No, and they've been close, yes. W and J tonight, yes. on a couple of occasions. Do you dare throw it with your fifth year quarterback? I think you can. I think you throw a little short route. Just because that's who they are. That's their identity. Saxton's going to go out there in the shotgun. Orsini, his junior running back, in the game along with the fullback, Sean Michael James, to block. Just two receivers set out to the right. Could it be a deep ball? Could they run a little post run here with one of these two receivers? The, the, the middle of the field's wide open. Washington and Jefferson looked like they jumped. They did not. Five seconds on the play clock. Snap will come. Outside zone. Orsini trying to get outside. Willie, he cannot. Gets to the 15. Maybe gets his helmet to the 16. They'll mark him at the 15. It's a pickup of one and seven seconds go off the clock. I would have liked Orsini there to keep pushing that edge. It's, a, it's one of the hardest things for these for these young running backs. They're not young, but running backs to learn and develop with this outside zone. That's an outside zone stretch play. they got to just keep pushing that edge and just trust that their line is going to get there. And then eventually that cutback lane is there. Because these guys all, they all want to start cutting back too early. And as off its line, especially when you get that edge set, I think you got a couple more yards there if you kept pushing. What a football game tonight. Ron Yance along with Steve Bocci calling this one for you. Mike Becker, our director. Coach Greg Debelak, Spartans, trying to knock off the presidents of Washington and Jefferson, hand them their first loss of the season. They face a third and nine. They've run two plays, and W&J has called two quick timeouts. Only 11 seconds have gone off the game clock. The presidents will be able to call one more timeout. Saxon in the gun. Tight splits. Hand off in the backfield, it's Deusler. And there's a penalty flag down on the play. Six more seconds run off the clock. It's obviously a hold. One thing's for certain. The presidents are going to get great field position. Oh, yes. I don't, was it a hold? Because he threw that really fast. It almost looked immediately after the snap of the ball. But now also this is a free timeout for W and J. No, it's a legal procedure. So everything that could go wrong right now for this Spartan offense is going wrong. Three plays that took 13, 17 seconds off the game clock. And the last one ended in a penalty that was a gift to Washington and Jefferson because they didn't have to spend their third time out. Yep. So they're not only going to get it now with good field position, they're going to get it with a minute five left on the clock probably and, and a time out. And we'll watch that punt because they have been very close to Arthur Rhodes the fifth. And he'll stand inside his own end zone. Stand about three yards deep in that end zone. Ready to receive are the presidents at the 48 of Case Western Reserve. Here comes the rush. Rhodes, snap, kicks off. It's a good one. High spiral at midfield. Caught. Fumble it. Fumble. Spartans, Spartans recover. Ball game. Oh. Thank you very much for returning the favor. How about that? Osi, Osi Chukawuchu. Coaches call him Osi. That's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> Play of the night. There we go. Boy, you're right. One, one, one. You know, one play deserves another. I mean, it was a gift that the Spartans gave this Washington and Jefferson team for their only touchdown, and they just returned the gift. So nice of them. Such a sportsmanship. 
thing to do. Wow. Wow. Was that a That's turn of awesome. events? But now it's on the case offense. You know, you were backed up there, and you couldn't run any clock. You couldn't get any yards. You get another shot at it here. Last three plays took only 17 seconds of clock time. They're going to just snap it. Oh, yeah, on. that's right. I forgot. They're out of timeouts now. They got one, not Right now they will be after this one. They'll have to call it. Well, the scoreboard still showed one timeout left for them. But apparently they, they don't have any left. He might not even be. Look at the crowd. Look at the players encouraging the crowd. That's a beautiful scene here awesome. at the Santo Field. I'm so happy for these guys. This is a great upset. You know, take to finish number one in the conference. Spartans were ranked real low after last year and everything. And way to come out here and get a win. Not, not That's going to do it. Yeah. Look at that. Hometown crowd treated to a special treat on a Saturday night. What a beautiful win. That's awesome. What a wonderful moment for Coach Debelak and his Spartan football staff and football team. This Spartan defense played out of their minds tonight. You really got to credit. I mean, this is an offense, Washington and Jefferson, that came in averaging 482 yards per game, averaging six yards per play. They had punted the ball before tonight only five times. Jeez, oh, man. They had six punts at halftime in a single game against the Spartan defense. What a night. Congratulations to defensive coordinator Warren Miller. What a scheme he set up for this football game. He made sure those guys were prepared and ready to go. They came out firing on all cylinders, and you can just tell that's directly correlated to a great week of practice. Coach Miller, Cam Brown. Cam um, Brown, possibly the best defensive end ever here? I think so. There's a couple other from names I don't, I'm not too familiar with that are pretty good back in the Dan Whalen years, but uh, Cam Brown was certainly excellent at rushing the quarterback. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. Steve will dissect the final stats. We'll say a final goodbye to everybody and wish the Spartan football team an outstanding weekend because they have won tonight. Knocked off the team pick to win the conference this year. Ranked in the top 25 in the country, too. They beat him 14-10 at the Santo. We'll be back. Have you heard the news that Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards? Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. There is a good look at a very passionate, fired up football team. Coach Debelak in the blue baseball cap leading his football team. You see Saxton, number three, the graduate quarterback right in the middle there. And let's look for some defenders in this shot because it was their night in the spotlight. Guys on that defensive front, A.J. Dadowski, R.J. Ayers, Caden Tong, Marco Toth, Sean Torres in the linebacker spot, Ryan Cabrera, Sakala Wolf, Schuster, Says, Kelly, name them all. And I'm sure there's a few we've missed. They were outstanding tonight. It's fun to see those smiles. This is what a Saturday night under the lights at the Santos is all about. It is. Electric atmosphere, great game, great competition. I mean, these guys, I'm jealous that they are, they get to experience this firsthand and get out there and celebrate the victory with their teammates and have a great time. It's no better feeling. I mean, it's fun going and scoring 42 points and blowing someone out, but there's no better feeling than coming in with a, a extremely worthy opponent, W and J, a standard of excellence in the PAC and all throughout D3 football, and beating them 14 to 10. I mean, just the fact that the defense held them to 10 points, that's a lot to hang their hats on right there. That's a team averaging 40-plus. We mentioned in that first half that defense had held them to 61 total yards on 24 plays. 
Washington and Jefferson did find themselves in the second half offensively. They ran another 41 plays in the second half after only running 24 in the opening half. And they finished with 251 total yards, but that is over 200 yards, almost 250 yards short yeah. of what they typically do. Mm -hmm. They're a 500-yard offense per game, and they had 258 tonight. Yeah. So, you know, credit that Spartan defense for taking the shot, yep. surviving the storm. Any mm -hmm. good athlete, competitor, team, opponent is going to give you a storm at some point in your competition with him, her, team, whatever. But if you can weather it, yep. come on the outside of that storm and have an answer for it, uh -huh. you can win. And that's what the Spartans did tonight. They won. And the field is potted with parents. It's a recruiting night. Got a lot of recruits here tonight. They saw a thriller. They saw a thriller, Steve Bocci. If you're here tonight as a senior at Berea Mid Park thinking about Case Western Reserve and you saw this, probably makes you feel, hey, I want to be a part of that. Oh, you're, you're coming. There's no doubt. You want to get a world-class education and have a world-class football experience. There's no better place in the world than Case Western Reserve University. There's your final. 14-10. Spartans over Washington and Jefferson. Spartans approved to 2-1 and one on the season. Presidents dropped to 2-1. and one. Up next for Case, Spartans going to hit the road. They'll be at Geneva next Saturday. Next time we'll see them here home is homecoming. Oh, I'm sure you'll be here that 8th of October against St. Vincent. For Mike Becker, our director, for Steve Bocci, my play-by-play -play analyst, my name is Ron Yance. Thanks for watching Case Football. Spartans a winner tonight. 14-10 is your final. Have a great and safe weekend, everybody.